I wouldn't talk to none of them, mate. I'm alive! I'm alive! That's what Franklin said. You remember he put, he put the bolts on him. Right, I'm alive. Not that I've got any fucking bolts on me. <laughs> yeah, 13 on, only one from the thumb up. Not nice, that. 13, get changed. Focus, focus, let's get focused. The magic's not even fucking working now. What's going on? <laughs> Angman Audits, love you, son. Bridge Tea Biscuit, 78, love you too. Uh, Rob, are you, Rob? Thanks for the text today, son. Love you all the well. Hope you're doing well. Lovely man, him, Rob. Absolutely lovely man. Support us all the way through this fucking bullshit from day one. Never, ever wafered or swayed or anything. Stuck right down the middle, fucking staunch, like a staunch troop, right, right over the top of the fucking, you know, the, when you go over the top in the war, he's been one of them would help you. Proper people. Like most of you been on here, a lot more used to tell the truth. There's the odd one or two who've been on and we found them out. But we're not, we've got so many so intelligent Robs and sort of Robs like me. He's like you, Mark Emerson. He's like, um, I'm an audience. He's like Peter the Boss. Super intelligent freedom. All of you are super intelligent people. And that's why we all get on because we can grow on the same page. When I was talking to that Divi, I tell him something, go, oh, what's that mean? I like? oh, didn't get it fucking thick. I've never known a thicker cunt in my life. So Emma's been on the phone to the police today, holding the bump, and they said, this, we're not getting into no warrants or anything. He's doing his job. So he's down the middle, no problem. And there's no arrest in the next one or two weeks. He said, I'm not doing nothing. So I want to apologise to that police officer. I got you wrong, brother. Thank you very much. I want this job and I want that job and I want this job. And I realise that he's not messing about. She's had to go up and down the police station because the man's working. And I didn't realise. So I told you something, I'm wrong. So I apologise to that. Talked to the police officer. Uh, you're doing a good job. And he just said, I'm on both sides. I'm not in one or the other. I'm just old school down the middle. So that, that'll do me. Don't worry, nothing's going to happen ever until I get all the evidence off you. So whatever he's saying, take no blind bit of notice. Of. Absolute rubbish. So thank you, brother, if you're watching. And I do apologise. I do. I'm going back on the old school. And I looked I was in bed last night. I was sitting there. I thought I shouldn't have said that to him. He's fucking. He's new school. He's not old. And the lady he was with was, was lovely as well. This uh, CID lady when I went next team three. He, he, I felt sorry for him last night because. I remember going back in my head, I was sitting there, and I was sat there, he was looking at me, he went, you all right, Brian, I went, yeah, thanks, and he went, I'm going to get my shoes, and I'll get them for you, and he, he put the, picked my shoes up, put them on my feet, and just passed my laces, I thought, and in my head, I felt fucking awful, I thought, the man tried to help me put my shoes on, I like Jesus, when he dropped, not the comparison to Jesus, I'm nothing that before the Didiots come on, when he dropped the cross, and he helped him, I felt like that, you know, that type of help, I couldn't pick, I couldn't put the shoes on, and the man helped me, and I thought, you called him, and he fucking helped you, so I was wrong, definitely wrong. And then if I'm ever wrong, I'll always tell the truth. Don't forget, but he like what he just said, there's nothing happening. He said at the moment, there's nothing happening. He said, we haven't even got, we haven't even got all the evidence. When Brian gets all the you and then Brian get all the evidence in. I look at both sides, then I make a decision. It could be months and months and months. So this cack, where he comes out, where he always the same. If you don't get the rest of the next two and such weeks, I'm never going on again. It's where his son's life. I imagine doing that and then breaking it and then. Same as me, if I don't get you done in the next two or three weeks, I'm not going to go on. Crazy. Anyway, let's move on. So, anyone got any questions? Thanks, God. Rob, uh, it's cheap escape. So, if that's not me calling, that's just me telling you what's going on with the police. So, you're not worried because the Lord, you just keep texting me saying, Are you all right by the day? Because you keep thinking I'm getting arrested. That's just them and his stupidness. So, there's no rest of nothing, guys. So, and my family and that, Marty, Paul, my nephews, and our Andrew and all of them, are worried because. My sister, my nieces, my uncles, my brother, my, my uncles, my brother, and everybody's worried in case I get nicked for something I've been fucking done. But no, don't forget push like buttons, guys. Forty on. Uh, we're flying, so yeah, the police uh, not arrested me, and there's nothing to arrest me for. He said, he said because I haven't looked at both sides yet. So that's what he'll do. Which we can't, we can't ask for any more. And if he's fair cop, you know, if you find something I've done, I said, well, I'll put my hand up. If you find something, and you ask me, did you say that? When they said me, did you say this? I mean, yeah, they say that. But I've never ever threatened this person or his wife or kid or anything. So I'll just let them do the job and get on with it. So, right, official topic talk. Hello, official topic talk. Steve, my little brother. Love you all the world. Pop and see you soon, Steve. You know, you know, you know there's always a room there for you, son. We love you all the world. Another one. Another look, another one really highly intelligent. Another one who's sussed him in seconds. And have you seen Ronan? Uh, 
we should probably talk. I haven't seen him for ages, so we'll have to get in contact with him. I've lost his number because they took my phone off me and the cops in there. I like Ronan, lovely, lovely, I, I used to like, lovely, lovely person. Does his own little podcast there. He's not in it for the money, he's not in it for the glory, he's just in it for the, he likes the, um, he's one of them old fashioned, you know, like, uh, when they all just sit down and just rebel, we're not doing it. He's one of them types who just won't give in. But nice person, Ronan. Which tea biscuit, uh, Peter? Hey, Peter, is that you? Which Peter is it? Is it Peter Devox or is it Peter's Peter? It's Peter anyway, that's me. That was my brother's name, Peter. That was my brother's name. I was going to court for a, for a, for a, I was going to court for a, so what, what, what happened is, I got a phone call from someone, Chris Curry, and he said, oh, there's a debt there of a lad called Danny. Now, Danny was in the army. He was in Afghanistan, and his mind went, his mate got blew up a piece of it. It was a landmine or something, blew up. And he was in the middle of the morning with six of them blown to pieces and all the bodies and the legs and arms all over him. So he used to have the zoom the pants on his head and, and, and fucking put his hands in his ears so he couldn't hear now. They pretended he was, he's not there. So they put the, the section and sent him back from the army. He was fucking a lovely kid, not a big lad. So we borrowed this money to a lad called Allison from Billingham. Now Allison's dad was six six foot ten, this fucker. Biggest person I've ever seen in my life, called the Iceman. And they called the Iceman because he sold ice in America. It got caught in America, it all come out because we, what happened? Anyway, I won't try to get through the net. So I met Danny and Chris. Chris is my little friend. Chris, Chris uh, Allen's his dad. So young Chris come and see me. I said, I need a lift. He said, I'm getting a lift off me, mate, because I was banned at the time. He said, he's got a pizza delivery shop where he could give you a lift when he's on your break. I said, it's only a billion back to see your kid. So we get to over there seeing Danny. He went, well, I lent him 1,500 pound, Brian. And the 1,500 pound is like, because it's not in, I'm not getting the money what I should get. Because it's down by, it needs to be 15, that 1,500 pound. He said, he could give it back in a couple of weeks. So I lent him for two weeks to get a car. He was going to sell a car and make money and give me a drink. He hasn't done that. He's only given me 200 pound. What, it's my pension. So my pension has to be at, at a certain amounts for me to get enough interest every month so that 1500 pound was killing me not having it in so he said i'll give you 750 pound i said i don't want nothing I don't want nothing so chris we don't want nothing so we goes in there the pub the tell star in billingham so we goes around to see gail with his mom so i'm driving down the road and seeing andy jones which was his uncle i said listen he's fucking said i know he owes the money brian he said uh, i'll tell you about him another time so i said him he got shot and i picked him up and carried him in the footwind Put him in the car and saved him with Sandy Jones with a similar story. So I'm going down the street and Billy and Chris said, no, they're there. I said, look, Chris, you tell him we all get out of the car. You just go, you know, Gail. One see ya. But we didn't know this ice man was there. We never heard of him. So he's knocked on the door and this ice man, fucking six foot ten, comes out, fucking arms like that on him, huge. I'm about 18 half stone. I was bang on the crack. My brother just died about three or four months before. I was bang on the crack. So like that, I felt like just running off. No, in my head, I thought, no, like the size, man, like, fucking hell, I'm not gonna be able to fight him. And I went, fuck it, come on. I've lost one brother, Chris is like a brother, he is my brother. So I ran down the street, and the young kid was only about, he was only about, I was about fucking 18 stone, he was only about 10, 10 stone. He got, I got there before him, obviously, he was scared. So we got to the bottom. Before we got to the bottom, he hit him on the head, and I thought it was a machete, but it was a little samurai sword. So, I've gone to the door going, I'm banging the fucking door and I'm, going, and I'm banging on the window, they're hitting him, there's about six of them, there's a woman hitting him with a baseball, I'm sorry, around his back. There's a black lad hitting him with a fucking metal mark bar. There's one stabbed him in the ribs, there's, and he's, he's hitting him with him there. It was a little machete in the end, we found out. So, I went, open the fucking door, you're killing him. So anyway, I fucking smashed his door open, and, and the bricks fell down in the fucking frame, all the frame fell out, so I've got in the door. Gone right and I've gone left, and then they've, they've got them patios off the other ones with the shut like that, like them brown ones in old fashioned type. So I've run out the door, they've got four of them behind the door, they all went flying. Running now, come on, and then the black lad's tried to get out the back door, but there's no key in the door, so he's trying to get in the, the, the rummage in the drawer for the key, can't find it. So he's had to turn around, so he stood square on, with his back against the wall. So he can't back up anymore because he's there, he's like that with his hands, big, massive, long hands. And he can't throw his punches, so I've gone under his arms and went bang right and hit him. Right on the chin, down like a bag of shit, hit this table and it smashed to pieces. It was a, a glass table with bits of metal on it. Uh -huh. And what the, 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 the 1980s looking table. So I bashed him anyway. So the next minute, 
I've got all the crisp on my arm. I thought I could hear the helicopters coming. Been in there about 10, 15 minutes. So the helicopter could hear the police were. I grabbed all the crisp and she's grabbed my arm. Can't be a stupid cunt, I said. Because I, I had him down the ice, man. So what I usually do is pin them down and go bang, bang, bang about five or six times all on the face. I'd rip every bone in the face. And I was lucky I didn't do it. I got deal. So what happened is I got all the crisp on my shoulder. I got him out the door. Got him to the car, but young Chris got him. There's like two Chris in there. So young, the other young Chris who was with us, he gets him out and gets him in the car with Danny. And uh, the other driver, I don't know what the driver's name was, I can't remember his name now. So there was six of them in the house. So I'm uh, I'm in the house, sorry, we run up, fucking out jump the car, we went to this this lad's Danny's granddad, parked the car on the back, yeah, he could go around the back and it comes like a driver, you could put the car. So we're there, I think fucking hell could he the helicopter and everything. So Cops come. So I've got on the run. I went to Ryan's. Ryan's mum let me stay there for three days. I mean, Ryan was in the documentary. So anyway, I got a phone call. The person was living here at the time and said, What have you done? There's a helicopter above the house and there's about 20, 30 police cars outside. They're all over the place. Farm response. I just put the phone down in case it was booked. Anyway, I stayed at Ryan's and I went. Then there, uh, so I stayed at Ryan's for about three days because his mum was away. Anyway, I went home after three days. I thought I'd make a fucking. So I've gone home, and with the house next minute, helicopter, all the street was full of coppers. So one of the neighbours obviously yeah, next door was a full copper. They're fucking screwed, so they've grasped me up, obviously. So I've come to the top window and nah, I'm Spartacus. I'm fucking Spartacus. Like I like a lunatic at the window, like fucking no top on, sweating, like fuck, because I've been trained a bit. Come and get me, come and fucking get me, come and fucking get me, you come screaming at the one in front of like. He's up his fucking head, he's mental. He's, he, the cop said, don't go in that house, you're not going to come out. He said, we'll have to wait out here. I could hear them talking, you know, with the thing. They're on the, Brian, this is Inspector such and Chief Inspector such and such. Come out the house with your hands in the air. If you've got any firearms or weapons, put them down. Or we will open fire and go, fuck yourself. Come and get me, you fucking scumbags and you fucking low-life cunts. Come and get me, you fucker. I think it was fucking James Cantney, I think. <laughs> anyway, they wouldn't come in. So I waited for about 40 minutes to an hour. So look down the side and they all had these fucking bulletproof with them fucking riot shields. They were banging the shields with the trungeons like that. And you're not centurion soldiers. Oh, and I thought, it's even better now, centurion soldiers. Spartacus was that so he got nipped in him by the centurion. <laughs> I was fucking laughing my head off upstairs. I'm drinking Lucas here. Ah, what you been to tell you? I was just, just fucking looking out the window every now and then. I thought, they're never going to kick the door. I mean, I'm not the ass and he had two big fuck off dogs that would bite your legs off. With Charlie in the house, and he had Wilson. Wilson was fucking crackers. He was a old English bulldog cross with American bulldog, but American bull terrier. He was fucking mental, mental, mentalist dog I've ever had. At the fucking door, screaming at the window, can't go in there, you're going to rip to pieces. So I'm stood there anyway, about an hour and a half later, I've had to come out. So I've come down, anyway, they put me in the van. I took the police station, you're under arrest for attempted, no, you're under arrest for attempted murder. And I have to wait a bag of me. I'm like, okay. I've got this, I've got me there. Anyway, they took me to the cells, to Middles, Middlesbrough, they took me to. And uh, so I stopped, I think it was Middlesbrough, because it was a close proximity. I think it was in Middlesbrough, I stopped. I was getting the mixed up. But they, look, they, look, they look the same when you get in there. So anyway, I'm in the cells. You're getting done for this, you're getting done for that. So I'm locked up next day. Chris Curry's already been caught. Because what happened to Chris, they hit him on the head with the, the, the little camera I saw about that big. Not Sam Rice, yeah. Suppose that little Sam Rice sword, yeah. Not a machete. And split his head open for me right the way to the back of there. It was never, I've never seen a fucking cut that bad. So they went another couple of inches and they cut his fucking head straight down the middle. He had, I can't remember, I think it was 36 staples and stitches right the way around the back of his head. And he was stabbed in the ribs. So what the dirty bastards done, the great thing was for us, there was a woman next door, she was a nurse, and her husband was a porter at the North Tees Hospital. It was a 999 phone call from an old woman. There was a 999 phone call off an old man. Oh, there's a man outside here, a black man. He's, he's arguing with a man with glasses on. Oh, he's hit the man with a machete. He said, uh, oh, he's got nothing. He's killed him. So that proved we were outside fest. And we went to the door. They said, we went to the door with guns, kicked the door and ran in. There was no guns there. And the, the other people got what they done, they went door to door. Investigations. But the cops hid the 399 statements, the 3999 phone call, the three statements of the old two men, two women and the man. 
But what happened is we were in court for it. We were in, in Old Mouth for 100 and odd days. It was the 14th of December. It was the 13th, I got a letter said, you're going to court tomorrow. So what happened, I'll go through anyway. So the cops got them in, they made the statements and all that shit. This fucker was six foot ten, dirty, low life cunt, right? And he lived in uh, Alabama. You know, you get everything off the disclosure when you get it. And he was done over there in Jamaica, the brass in 40 odd yardies up for 40 ounces of 40 or 44 ounces of crack. Got them all 10s and 20 years jail. So when I was in the jail, there were some lads from Leeds. Oh, it's sick. Um, he said, Don't worry, man. We shot this fucker out. Two days later, that the windows all blew out. A whole lot of the windows got shotguns. So they had to move them out of side because the cops come and said, Have you had that? Have you had that done? I said, Yeah, I got over the roof. Yeah, I've been in no mouse all night. I've been out over the roof. I went down the town for a, I went down the town for a few drinks and I went on there and shotgunned all that. And then I got back over the roof, on the roof, and got back in my cell and was brave for a uh, uh, call. Morning, morning, wake up. Are you fucking mental, you silly cunt? I'm 20 odd stone. How the fuck am I? Well, I wasn't. I was about 19 stone. Or 19 stone. I think it went up to because I put the arm up. Shut up! Fucking hell, man. Every night. Um, I can't talk when I've dropped a bat and it drives you mental. So, we'll use your story with it. This is what happens, say. Uh, so, the the cops were being kind of cunts. They kept me in and were saying, we've got this on you. So, when there was a lad in there, he was called, let me think of his name, it was the same as the runner. What was he called? Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson. Thank you, Michael Johnson. Thank you for being a hero. So Michael Johnson to my mate Scrimmy, love you, Scrimmy, my pal. He went, look, you're going to have to tell the truth. I'm not here to threaten you. What happened? He said, well, Brian never done nothing wrong. All did Brian did went in to save Chris Cully's life. They were killing Chris. If it wasn't for Brian Cockle, Chris Cully would have been killed. They were stabbing him and everything in my bars. He said, it was blood all over the walls and all over the furniture and everything. He said, Brian saved Chris Cully's life that day. Chris Cully, come on, you can see the video. He's want to watch it and you'll hear Chris talk about it. So the cops, there, any bastard. So one of them, Allenson, had a baseball bat and he put it down his front and he walked upstairs like that in the room where the cops were, went to the top, jumped out the window, put the bat next door. The cop was said, the coppers walked out the kitchen, deliberately let them get the weapons out. There was a bar, a machete. Uh, a rounder's bat full of blood and a baseball bat and there was, there was six implements a knife sorry a knife so all them implements were in the house the cops let them go next door you're supposed to seize everyone in the house and make them all sit down not move not these fuckers didn't this is why i was mad about them so the woman next door she said she phoned up the police said look at i'm not being funny she said but i was i had everything she said i was off, off duty that day i'm a nurse my husband a porter and the windows were open by about two inches, and I had the, I had the net, the net curtain in the middle. She had friendly flies and stuff coming in. She said, and my baby was in the cot there, right in front of me. I heard everything through the window because the top two windows were open, and I heard all I heard was he, he, he hit Chris Curry on the head with the, the big black lad hitting the ginger you know, with the glasses on the head with the, with the machete, uh, with whatever it was, uh, a small machete it was. But they said somewhere I saw, but it wasn't. And then she said, how do you know all this? She said, he said to her on the phone, she went, how do I know all this? She said, when the police went, the ice man come in with the weapons and put them under my settee in the black bag. So there's a rounder's back with blood on. It'll prove it's Chris Curry's blood. There's a knife with blood on, it's Chris Curry's. And there's a machete, it's not a samurai sword. And there's a chair, I think it was a piece of wood, like a piece of chair, like or something. It was there. I said, there's a, a rounder's back, I think it was, it was six, Six weapons, come six people in it. We know we don't need them. This scumbag cunt from Stockton Place. Oh, Stockton Place look at me. Once we stopped him, I'm wrong. I remember seeing the cunt over T-side, not T-side, but I remember seeing him over um, in the, the centre where you're going. As the, as the, I seen him on the went, you know, I'm saying, fuck off, you fucking rat. Don't even speak to me, you, you cunt. But you never wondered, did you, daft cunt? Yeah, but I got you three months for a man. Yeah, illegal, you fucking bent cunt. You knew all along them disclosure with them. You knew about the old people making the 99 phone calls. Anyway, so go, go on. So what happened then? We got a phone call from the lady through Scrimmage Friends. We phoned them and says, I'll go to court and, and I will give the evidence. I've asked the police twice now and twice to declined to take the weapons 
and my statement to prove Brian Cockrell did not start the fight and Chris Curry didn't start the fight, they started the fight and I've got the weapons of Chris's blood all over them. They still wouldn't take this decision. She recorded the cunts. So anyway, we went. she went to my we Craig Beer. She said, Mr. Beer, I've got all the weapons here. These are from the house. Um, they came in. She said, well, why did you come in? Before, I said, well, so he's nearly seven foot tall, this man. He's a gangster. He sells drugs. He sells crack all over Billingham. So he's got prostitutes and everything. I can't afford fire bombs that will come from. The house was petrified. Now the, the house got shot up the other week because the house, all the windows got blown the house. Some lads from Leeds, Leeds, remember that name, Leeds, the front. From Leeds, these lads, top, top, proper people, blew all the windows out and they had to move them up to the lakes, Cumbria way. Anyway, they were there about three weeks. They got to move from there to Surrey Keys. So they were getting moved around like another said person we know and they were found. Anyway, so what happened in the end, we had to go back. So I was in the cells. So I'm sitting in the cell. I'm saying, Lord, help us out on this one. You know, I haven't done nothing. Don't get me wrong. I was just trying to help the kid. I wasn't going to take no money off him. I was going to give him back so he could keep his mortgage on, on, on an evening keel. The kid could put food on the, on the, on the table for his children. I mean, Chris went to the penny. We did this as a good deed. Good Samaritans. Have a go hero, they say. So you do you do these things and you end up getting fucking locked up. So this Yardy, well, he grasped the Yardy. The Yardy's got on my side saying, they said to me, they said, leave him to me. Don't you do nothing. Leave him to us. We need payback now because he put 40 other them lads in jail, allegedly. And uh, he'd also got, what had happened, he, he got moved from over there under the witness protection, witness protection to Nottingham. So when he was in Nottingham, he stabbed someone, he got five years in jail. So that's where he went to jail. Now, the woman who was involved with his girlfriend was like, she was in the Black Lads. That's up to her. So she used to go with my mate, Mark Johnson. She used to go with Gail, they called her. So she's in the Black Lads, that's up to her. But, uh, <coughs> pardon me. She's there. Uh, what's what's happened? I lost my story. Fucking hell. Oh, yeah. So she, she she was going out. She's a prostitute, well known prostitute. We found out she'd been done in America, um, England, Scotland, Holland, all over Europe, Spain. I think it was by each country she'd been done for prostitution and pimping young girls, 16 year old kids out. Dirty bastard. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much, Rob. Appreciate this. That'll go straight in Emma's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I love you lot. So what happened is we've done a good deed in the air to help someone who's an army hero. I've been in fucking jail looking at fucking eight yeah. I brought the last time I did it, I brought all the stuff down showed you where I got remanded and everything. Because the idiot was going, he's lying, so I made him look a fucking fool. So I brought all the de depths down and when I was remanded. And I'm on the bottom bottom floor. I just bought but just, like if I go to jail now, I'll go in that jail, I run that jail. The screws don't run it, I'll fucking run it, and they know I run it. He'll tell you next door, they'll all tell you. When I go in that jail, I run that fucking jail. I don't have to do it now. I'll go boss over and you go to the toilet. Do this boss over and I say, oh, yeah, you no problem. Anything I want, I get food, extra food, extra fucking train, anything I get. Any, any job I want in that gym, at the gym, or all the anything I can get, get what I want. Uh, and then you can ask anyone from the tea side, they'll tell you. Anyone who's been old mouse will tell you. The lads from Liverpool, Manchester, they'll all tell you. They've all been there and seen me. So we're like, Fuck hell, we're going to go to jail. So I'm sat there and I've got a letter out of the nook. I was just praying to God, please help us on this. So I couldn't believe this. So I, I had no barrister. So I had Craig Bear passed away. I love you, Craig. Still love you. I still think you every day. Lovely man got me off. He said, Brian, you paid for my house. The amount of fucking things you've got done for the arm robberies and the kidnappers. And the, he said, you paid for my house. He said, Ten times over, he said, he's laughing his head he used to have, like having a drink, he was nice, he was a lovely man, but he was he hated the place, he hated he didn't like he well, didn't hate the place, he didn't like corruption. He, he used to say stinks of high heaven. That's that's a that's a saying in the in the judiciary old world it means it's obviously fucking really bad what they've done. So anyway. So just me things. I'm so not reading the fucking comments, but I'm telling you story. So we we in this we've been remanded, like I said. So I'm in the fucking cells. And then all of a sudden, clock roll. They give you a letter. Now the letter they give you, of course, off the solicitor. You have to open it like that and let them see it. So my brother's called, I was talking to my brother Peter. I was going, oh, Peter, we do the help off you, son. I'm talking like that next minute. The letter come in, it says, your barrister's Peter Mayfield from Leeds. 
he's the best barrister in the northeast all right, right he said the prosecution this is fucking i've got the letter upstairs still the prosecution is called peter something else can be saying him he said the judge is called uh peter, peter fox all three fucking people involved were called peter i looked at old peter up there like i went fuck you can believe it all three were called peter in the trial i said we've got this one anyway oh, a week later cock road with what he said you're going out tomorrow what's happened is chris has shouted over the show that he'd been on the phone he went right i've just been on the phone he said this, my um barristers had a, a review with the police and with the prosecution and the defense so do you know who brought it forward you won't you never believe them in ways it wasn't the fucking matter of defense it was called peter something i can't remember his name but he was in the same office same chambers as peter Napier's. Peter Makefish was funny, he said to my mate who was in there, he went, Brian's fucking, he's fucking you, because he swears. And he goes, he's fucking huge. And he said, he started chatting box around me, he said, I shit myself. So he was just going, bam, 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 my hand messed it up. <laughs> Throwing punches near me face, he said, his hand speed's unbelievable. So he's so funny, his character, he's so intelligent. I could sit and talk to him all day, he said. So anyway, he said he hasn't done this, he knew. So anyway, when, what they did is, they went and got, they went and got the disclosure. So the disclosure is always given to the prosecution first, then the prosecution gives to the defence. The prosecution got up with, have you seen this? To Peter Mayerpiece, he said, this is, he said, I caught, I was coming down the ladder on the stairs, he went, have you seen this? This is the worst corrupt case I've ever come across in my life. He said, that man's done nothing wrong. He said, he's gone in that house and had a go here, like the Douglas Heard said. And the man's right, he saved, he said, we've been up for a murder trial, it wasn't for Ryan Cockrell, but he didn't save his mate. He said, I've never arrested him for attempted murder and uh, aggravated burglary. I said, well, well, can I just explain the aggravated burglary? I had to push the door in, smash the door in, to get to my friend to stop him being chopped to pieces with machetes. With the, with the samurai sword, sorry. No, it's a machete. Was that, was that machete? Yeah, machete. A little machete. And he then was stabbing him. And there was two pints of blood that Chris lost. So we asked for the blood. They went, oh, we couldn't find none. It was all up the stairs. One of them ran up the stairs with his hand like that. And his, all his hand was all the way up the stairs, blood. When you were upstairs, you put your hand on the wall. All that was blood. All the spangled pieces was blood. All the stairwell downstairs was blood. Pour the blood. All the weapons had blood on. But they couldn't find no blood. Fucking pure shite corruption. It's all bad them on me. The weird dirty bastard and the main copper was involved from Stockton, you fucking slimy bastard. You wouldn't fucking even come and take a statement off us. You wouldn't even fucking come and give out letters to give our version. You wouldn't even take a statement off us, you fucking dirty low life cunt. Now, the new couples are totally different from these dirty low life cunts 30 years ago. But that's how bad they were. Dirty low life cunts. We didn't even take a statement off us. We didn't give us our chance. You've got to, when you, we, we could only give it to our solicitors. But the police are supposed to take a statement off you yeah? because we could have countercharged them. And Chris could have countercharged them. We'd have been It was not one injury because when he hit him, they were caught in the chain. He with the leaf there. Didn't break now and he fell on the floor. The window, sorry, the table broke. So anyway, Chris is saying, we'll get, he's like, so what do you mean? He said, well, I've had a meeting where there's the judge, um, the police, we have like a meeting, I don't know what it's called, this meeting, you have a meeting, but they all sit there and decide. So the judge said, I don't know why these people have been in jail this time. So the, the prosecution, cheeky cunt. He said, he might as well leave them in, left a new year now. It's uh, the 14th now, the judge went, I beg your pardon. Because my barrister was there, and Peter Makepeace was there, and Chris was barrister. He said, these people have been in jail, in prison, of course, prison, custodial sentence they got they've done all this time in jail 100 and 101 days in jail in prison for nothing so anyway it goes out look get told to get up the next day i couldn't sleep my eyes were all bright red no red being up all night couldn't sleep so, I said. so anyway it fucking goes uh the, the young the, the woman went and made a statement as well the lady for us said she'd go to court for us and they seen that and then what goes off mainly is the disclosure so the disclosure was given to the prosecution and then the prosecution you would have so many days to give it to you so the court shut on the 16th i think it is 16th of december i was there 14th for beth it was the 16th it was all like as if it was god so the next minute they said oh well he's the disclosure so when my mate made piece read it he said the one the one it was called peter something else from the same chambers in york he's from he said there read that he said that that is pure corruption he said so when peter made piece read it he went i can't believe what they've done here he said they've had this man in all time and all this time they've had the 999 phone call where she goes hello is that the police 
and um, I'm stood here now, I'm watching, there's a fight in the street, my name's Mrs. Smith or whatever, I live at such and such a dress, and there's a big black man, he's just hit a man on the head with a machete, he always, always passes a fell off, I think he's killed him, and he's felt the thought, oh, he's dragging him in the house, well, there's attempted, anything above the waist is attempted murder, and dragging someone into the house is, is um, false imprisonment, kidnapping and false imprisonment, they never got fucking charged for now, you just want to mean, Chris, Chris, Chris is a dangerous lad, lovely lad, changes life around Christian now, but, I kind of went down also. I mean, he would have been killed. So then the next one, hello, this is such and such. I've just seen a fight in the street. There's a man fighting with him, and he's hit him on the head with a sword, and he's fell at the floor. And oh, wait a minute, there's a big, there's a big white lad running down the street. So leave him alone. Oh, he's begging on the window, saying, "Leave him. You're killing him. You're going to kill him. You're going to kill him." That was the word I was shouting. You're going to fucking kill him. I was shouting. Oh, he's kicking the door in. I think he's going to save his mate's life. This was all recorded. It was nine, nine, nine calls. Cleveland police, like when Emma phoned, they're all recorded. And what happened is they were, they were disgusted. The judge was fuming. The prosecution barrister was fuming. And he went, These people aren't seeing another single day in jail. Tomorrow we'll go to court. And Peter Fox, the judge, was there. So he goes up, he goes to the middle of the Crown Court and gets gets to the courts, goes in the courts. So eight screws stood there and said, Don't start that fucking shit with me. But loads of people around me, Chris said, whatever you do, I'm warning you, don't start that with him. He'll, he'll fucking wipe you out in seconds. No, no, no trouble. I said, well, why the fuck are you stood with seven years glaring at me? He said, you're going to have a go. I said, put you, I mean, your hands are ready to have a fight with me. I said, I, I promise you, I will fucking bump punch you all over this fucking court place. No, that's what it is. He said, you're going to have to wait another so many hours to get out. I said, what are you fucking on about? Because what happened? We went and seen the judge. He said, I apologise today, Mr. Coppola, Mr. Curry. For you to have to do this uh, prison sentence you should never have done this in the first place but i want to speak to the officers in my chambers after this i want the names of them and i want them brought to court i want to know why these people have been kept in jail for, in other words prison he said for over 102 102 days it was in the end by the time we went to court he said and all he did is have a go hero exactly what the heck, that's what they call it, have a go hero and i'm i do believe to this day reading everything what the other people have said Mr. Cockrell has gone in there being a hero and he's been locked up for 202 days. This is why the judge said people won't have a go. People won't, won't work with the police, especially when you're hiding their statements and you're withholding the evidence. So he went, fucking well, let's be brilliant. Peter Fox, I think he's passed, I know he's passed away now. I had him three different times and three times. I wonder what a lovely man he was. But all three of them, and I talked about my brother Peter, I went, Peter, I need help with you. So I thought, I think they set me up and we get fucking long time jail here. Because I'm looking at eight yeah, they said five, five yeah for the aggravated bagger and eight yeah for the for the attempt. I said, said the man who only punched him one punch, when he hit him on the fucking chin. That's what I was doing for eight, eight years. Eight year all in, sorry, three year for one, and five years was eight year. We've got to get the said, Just be looking at eight yeah. Went, Fuck hell, Craig. He said, No, the fucking eight yeah. And he went, Don't talk, because it will definitely be them. I said, No, man, but there's bugs everywhere in these times. But there's another one, there's another bug, there's another bug. He knew what they were like with me because when you're a high profile criminal, they try everything they can. They tried everything, they even got people to tell lies in the box. And in the end, they had to move them. Them people who'd done that thing had to move up to each side for good. And I end up I end up saving the young I end up saving that lad's uncle. He got shot and I picked him up. I'll tell you that story another time. Yeah, fucking unbelievable. Unbelievable. I've, I've, I've even got the depositions upstairs. I've still got Michael Johnson, I remember that from the runner. And I'm, I've got the woman who was lovely, she was. I think she was called Julie, so she lived next door. And uh, she I didn't dare say nothing because he said he's seven foot tall. And then the Michael Johnson went, but I know I'm, I'm, yeah, he says, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll bring it down next time. I think, I think it's upstairs somewhere. And I think Lee, Lee Walton's got them wrong. Maybe he's got them. And it says there, uh, Brian Cockrell, um, he said, I'm oh, sorry, he said, I was nearly seven foot tall. He said, but Brian Cockrell come from that door, it was a totally different thing. He said, honestly, it was like, it was unbelievable. He come through that door like a, like a fucking tornado. He said, everyone just scattered. They all, run, there's Brian Cockrell the run. And all that shit, I had a gun. And then they had a knife. And then they had that. No, they're the ones told up because he already told his dad that we're coming round. Chris Curry's coming to tax us, but he didn't tell Ice the truth. And later on, the Ice apologised to the back judge and said, tell Brian I was in the wrong. I apologised, he said to him. And I said, tell him, forget about it. No, life's too short. And... 
it'd be like anyone, wouldn't it? It'd be like one of your sons, and I'm getting taxed, and somebody's coming to see you about a debt, and you don't expect it. You think, not tax a master, and then you go out with a fucking weapon or something, you end up hurting someone, you go fucking mental, and you find out. But uh, Dan Danny was all right, Danny got his money. And uh, yeah, it was a good, good, good thing, but I was in there 102 days. I was in, I was doing, I was 100, 100, 101 days and two days in the cell, so it was like 103 days. But fuck all. But what I should have done is, it was a, what it is if you get the cops for a false arrest, it's good. But if you get the cops for a malicious, keep a malicious rest and arrest, then you can get you're talking hundreds and hundreds, talking millions of pounds with the malicious when they knew all along. That they had weapons when they knew all along they had the 999 phone calls three not four sorry three not fucking one two old women and old bloke all give evidence and then when they took the statements off them they hit them as well so the old people give statements as well and they put them out of the way but the disclosure comes forward at the end that, i've got enough loads of times disclosure they hide it right to the end they expect you to go i'll do a deal instead of give me eight yeah i'll, I'll take four now nah, you get no deal for me that comes but them daft, them daft cuts they went they went they were in the house and there was a cop car in the front arm response and the still went up and boom blow the windows out and then they come to the, come to the, come to the fucking plate they come to the fucking jail and said oh we know you've had that done prove it I said what have we done yeah ah i remember now it was when i got my superman suit on and flew over the fence fucking idiot i was supposed to get over an 18 foot fence with barbed wire and dogs and everything oh am i i know i'm fucking good i'm not that good Okay, now the shit. We know you've had something to do with this one. Prove it. You're that stupid cunt. I can't talk like shit. I don't. You stupid cunt. You do have to talk like that. And yeah, do you fucking stupid cunt. Fuck off, you smelly cunt. Do you want to make something of it? Do you want to straighten me and you? I just talk like shit. When the night said that, when I was down, I was wrong. What I said the other week, I, I can't stand lying bastards. They sat there with all the evidence and they knew. And she was a prostitute. I'll talk about tell you about prostitutes. So, well, this is how it happened. She was on the game. So, what they were doing, they were going into places like, say, like a, a little hotel, like that. Cheap ones are about 15 quid, I think, where the lorry drivers park for a night, 15 quid, I think they're called A1 or something like that. It's called, I can't what it's called now, the, the, the place where they go, Formula One. That's it. So, she was going to a place like Formula One and other, other places on the game, getting fixed up with blokes. So she turned to about five different men and he's hiding in the wardrobe and she pulls out a knife for the valley and robbed. He's your fucking money looking like a businessman she's got fixed up with. Anyway, the fifth or sixth time, I think it was the sixth time. So he said, uh, what are you gonna do, right? He went, give us your fucking money. He went, Whoosh! he was going to come a policeman, blow the whistle, kick the door, and arm, arm response got him. He got six, yeah, I think, and she got five. No, she I think she got four or five and he got six with the other knife. Uh, that's what we're doing, robbing people at knife point, and they were actually getting young girls on the game, 16 years old. So when I went to the that was recently, so she got done. So he was then went to, to a jail in he was only in jail and not even for stabbing someone when he came over here from the I think it must be the FBI brought him over and fucking giving protection. We stabbed someone about five years in Nottingham. And while we're in or whatever jail it was he was in, he went to the same jail, Alan Allenson, and he met him to he tried to show Oh, he's nice. Oh, who's he? Oh, he's called the ice ice man. He used to sell ice. And so she ended up getting fixed up with him through it through her son being in the same jail as him. And that's how they, they come out and started fucking um doing what they were doing. But yeah, fucking shit. I would when I got outside, I would come on there, start calling them all that now racist as fuck to him. I wasn't not gonna like it. I'm not racist, but I was wouldn't have him out and throw a punch. I would slip you away, I'll get your right hand left up. I'll knock your fucking teeth right down your throat. One day I was going, I'm getting the police, I'm getting the police, I'm like, I need the police coming. I said, I'm with shit house. And I was about 10 feet away, I was on the path. Don't go on the grass, because you can slip on the grass or you eat, because your ankle can go. So I'm on the path, and he, he was, no, no, I don't want to fight you. I thought, you're six foot ten. I never said six foot ten. In my head later on, I thought, you're six foot ten, you stood there, big fucking coward, with 20 odd stone, big shit bag. Bully, but the, the, the D was, he was like, you know, if the Game of Thrones, what he had, he had a much better physique than him, off the game. not as strong as him, but a mad, unbelievable. If you put him on like, in a gladiator film, he'd look marvelous. Pro, pro, like, like a pro bodybuilder, he was like, but no legs, no legs, bang, poof, tax man, get you up, you cunt, down like fucking Bambi, Bambi on ice. And then I came, little Chrissy was there, little Chrissy was telling there, uh, I tell you, he was telling Steve Mack, Steve, telling Steve Mack the story, he came up with the festival and struggle. 
he's telling me he said to our Brian, it was right up, he said, he took his fucking ice, but went down like a bag of shit. Couldn't get up, his legs were all over. Well, yeah, fucking hell. And then we just go, tell me one person you've had a fight with that clown. Because he wouldn't even dare get out of the car to fight something like that. So when I went to jail, I got remanded, uh, attempted murder, aggravated murder. I thought, okay, we tell you, we punched him. So anyway, got dropped to assault. Because I can drop it, you see. I got dropped to assault, aggravated murder. So I said, I've told you I did kick the door. Save him. So when it went to save him, I caught him to 20. He's had a go a hero. Jack Straw's been the same at the time. He's gone in there and saved his mate, his friend's life. We would be dealing with the we would be dealing with the murder case today if it was the cop up going in that house for bravery. And the new barrister said, he should have been given the medal, not a prison sentence. And the judge like was like that, you know. You know you can tell somebody's fucking good and good. So lies again from the Diddy. So yeah. So what happened is uh, they, 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 they moved on the area completely fucked off. Never come back. He used to be friends with Mark Owens. He's passed away now, Mark. He said, no, well, I couldn't be him like Mark. He admitted it. He said, no chance of beating him. Mark said, you've got no chance. Mark was a world champion, kickboxer, and European champion. And he was a, he was a top uh, professional boxer. I think he was only middleweight or something. And he was twice, he had two fights where he was fighting a lad. If he won, he would be fighting for the world title. Really, really good boxer. A brilliant, even better kickboxer. Not one of these bullshitters that pretended them. He had all the belts, the real belts, and all the fucking trophies and everything in his house, hundreds of them. Trophies all over the fucking place. Yeah, well class. Unexpected Christmas moment. Time, time flies, bro. Just fly, mate. You know what? I was just thinking that in the night, Rob. I was fucking sitting on the bed, I thought. Craig and Jill come on. We were an episode out of nowhere. I was just going through this anyway. So I started watching it. And he, that kid was a double of me when I was a kid. Came off Craig and Jill with the same black jacket and everything. He had the same. We all know them type of gear. That like me took his look. I had run over the bike going all over. It was called uh, Took His Lucky. That was what it was called. It was like, that was me. That was exactly what he did. He got up to going out partying. Not drinking though. Just going to different places. Out nights out. Judge Fox. Peter Fox, yeah. Judge Peter Fox, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Steve Shannon, yeah, Steve Shannon. No, I don't like you. You remember the Ice Man stayed? I don't know if you remember him. Fucking you, Terry said. I seen him all. He was selling to sell crack all over Middlesbrough, and he came. He was from uh, Alabama. He was. He would tell you why they called him the Ice. Well, he was twenty odd stone. Obviously, in the army, he was. He was in the army. He was. He was a marine, not like a marine. I think he was. But he was only about seventeen stone then. But he was six foot ten. Do you remember that film? The um, the candy man, he looked like him, fucking massive. But obviously he went on the steroids and got huge, he didn't need to be fit, like in the army, because he wasn't in the army no more, so he started doing it. He actually did a he actually did a a couple of um look at the pelicans, look at the pelican fly, cool, cool that had there in Spain on the beach, he did that and he did a few more. I think he went on the door in East Enders as well. Uh, one episode. But uh yeah, fucking huge, huge. I just like that. I'm six three and a bit. I was fucking like that, but it was great because I like being smaller, fighting to be bigger because you can throw that right up, right over the court. It's just, just when it lands, it doesn't miss. When it lands, you know it's game over. You've got no chance of staying up, no chance. And if you do, you go like that and you just follow the left over the top. And what you do is you be a dirty bastard. What you do is you throw your left over the top, miss, and hit him in the elbow, right in the fucking face. So you go land the right, left hook, smoky Joe Fraser used to do jump up off your feet. On black chart me how to do it. Jump off your feet and throw all your body weight into the punch. With the full 24 stones going into that punch, and boom, it takes the fucking head off. But then goes, so I have all over the place and then just drop like a fucking rocket. The only thing when you do it, you are scared of it because the only thing is all you don't hurt yourself because you're hitting flesh here on the sides, on the side of the face. There's all right as well. But when you hit straight on the nose, you break your hands and break your fingers. So I broke your finger twice, thrown straight, straight right. But then he built it. We haven't seen anyone with that much power and that much speed and that big. Stephen Sayer said it. But there's Sean Atwood, fucking Lee Wortley, fucking Big Big Joe Higgins and Brian, you fought some fucking tough men. That power in your fists are unreal. The bit Norman Buckland, Brian, Brian's the man, he says. He also says Brian's the man. Any Buell says it. Brian's the man. 
So why is all these people saying these things and the idiots saying I'm totally different? You've got to remember, when I was working on the door, that idiot who writes books, was three, four, three year old, four year old, when I was when I was on the door, 19. You know, she was three year old, wasn't even that fucking, was in the, wasn't even in the primary school, he was in the little, the little infants, getting his little quarter bottle of milk. Did he could? You can't write books on Peter if you don't know them. Don't know if it was somebody's brother you were talking about, but he's never talking about his brother because none of them have given permission. He just lies. Please sub, please sub for me, Peter. Peter the Vox Gospel sub for you. Fucking, I'll do what I do, but I'll do it. Yeah, I'll fucking listen to you for a fucking change, Peter. I'll thank fuck for that. I'll put me fucking, put me head, put me head back in like that. Peter the Vox, take the floor. Yeah, he was a brilliant judge. I was, I'll tell you the other one another time because obviously I don't want to keep going about them because that's one good story. Well, you could even make that up if you tried. You, you, you tried to make me cut off. The thing is, you were saying I was lying, so I got all the stuff, brought them down, remanded. So, what year was it? And it goes home. I saw the letter from Nick Nixon. He'll tell you, Mark Emerson. Mark Emerson's on here. Nixon's Nixon solicitors from Red Car, right? Sent me the letter, the yellow letter. It was Nixon and something else came the name Nixon and it came from there. I think it's a John Nixon, I think I'm not sure. And he sent me a letter saying, Brian, we're, we're going to we're going to be getting out and all that shit. But he said, we'll just keep it with us. He said, uh, we know you haven't done nothing. He said, it's absolutely even the prosecution barrister when I see them, because they started it off then Craig, Craig couldn't have seen me there, but Nixon, Nixon instead, because I think Craig was doing something else busy. But he, he went both of them working, but he, uh, yeah, judge. Yeah, he was a great judge. On three times, I was up for serious assaults, and three times I got off with him. I think he likes me. You know, you tell somebody he likes you. He just told the truth. I said, "You're on. I had to fight with that man. He threw two punches at me. He missed, and I hit him with one and broke his jaw. I can't help it, Your Honour. If I have to defend myself, and I can fight, and he can't, he had two goes at the cherry, missed twice, and I had one. I concur with that. I did not stamp on his face. I did not kick him. I turned him in the recovery position." Made sure he was, wasn't choking. I put him in the ambulance to wait for the ambulance to come. I helped the ambulance try and put him in the ambulance and I got him in the car and drove away. I went up and I got him not guilty. Because he said, Yes, you threw the punch with him. That was another one with those witnesses in the street and it was in Dovecot Street. I got off with that another one. Caught him right on the fucking chin and he took his head off. I gave him a Gasman fracture, it was called. Uppercut, boom, stepped in right up with uppercut. See what I mean? It's, it's coming in now. Well, you can feel all the punches come back together now. When I was in old man's I had a box off, I had everything. I was having food brought around. I was having in this on the Sunday. Yeah, they get out, they would come would go down to the canteen. One sausage, one man, one egg, one that. I went to Mr. Davison in his 70s. I don't know if he's still alive. Lovely man from Grinch. I'm an old school army lad, old school boxer. Oh, you done it then, Rock. I got a refund on the ice and told them, didn't watch it. You told you I was right in that. You don't have to pay for it. If you don't watch BBC Live, you can watch it later on. Like you said, say EastEnders 1 and EastEnders comes on again. You can watch it then. But if you tell them, write to them, say, I don't watch any BBC Live programmes at all. I only watch normal TV. And most of the time, I just put DVDs in and they refund all your money back for a full £156, £149.56, I think. That's about the eight persons who I've told now in the last three weeks have got the money back. I know what I'm talking about. I wouldn't like you. All you can do is try. Just write them and say, I don't watch any BBC programmes. I'm mostly out all the time. I work all the time. They can't do an ounce and they cannot come in your fucking house. Even if they come to the police, they haven't got the power to come in your house because you haven't. It's called, um, it's called, fucking what you call it. You haven't got an agreement. You haven't got an agreement. You haven't signed any contract to say you're going to pay money every year for your television licence. So you don't have to pay and they have got a binding that's it, a binding contract there's none so you do not have to pay for the telly if you don't watch live tv programs only the bbc all the other television channels you can watch bbc you just say i don't watch for it no if you do want to watch it and you watch it in the room and there's no such thing as a tv license detector it's fucking bullshit. my mate ozzy used to work on them come to the door knocked and i said television man are you ozzy i said i'm gonna i'm gonna fucking License, he went, come down, look at this. Took me outside, there was a box about that big. About that big, it was wood. And there was an area, there was a thing on the top, he said, that's just a fan. 
that's not a metal, that's not detecting aerials. If you think about Brian, go to a block of flats, 200 flats. How's it going to pick which flat? Where's the signal? They say 200 tellies on, 200 signals come from all different areas. How could that decide which one's got a television license and which one hasn't? You know what I mean? You can't do it. It's a they only go by your postcode. So if you haven't got it by your postcode, they send you letters where you're coming to your house. Detector vans are going to be in your area. Uh, 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 I know you were going to get jail because of you. You can't get any fucking jail. You say, you just said, send a letter saying, I don't watch live TV. I don't watch BBC at all. I just watch normal TV, Channel 4, Channel 5, and programs on the um, on, on Skype. I don't know what do you call it. You know, DVD, and you'll get all your money refunded, and that's for two years. They don't, they don't bother you again for another two years. So every two years, you just tell them you haven't got a license, you, you don't watch live TV. Trust me, you'll get your money back. There's, there's a rock just got his back. It's gonna be fifty percent, everyone. <laughs> oh, I have a debt collector. You know that you're, you're in the contract with me now. You signed on here. You signed on here now. You put your name on. <laughs> yeah, Rock, are you all right, Rock? Peter the Vox, bless you. Yes, so Mark. Yes, yeah, so Mark. Uh, Emerson, he, he knows um, them, them solicitors from Red Cat. So they sent me a letter saying, uh, what was it? He said, uh, fucking, I forgot what I was He sent me the letter and explained everything in the letter what, what was going to happen, everything anyway. It did, everything. Uh, every, there's Nixon's as well, Nixon's solicitors. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah, I think it is Nixon. Sorry, it's Nixon. Oh, sorry, Nixon solicitors, and I've got it. It's got blue writing on it. So it's yellow. The the, the, the letter, but it says uh, about um, the times and dates when I was in there. So he was going. He was never in jail for the fight. He's making it up. So I brought just like the fucking. That he said, never had a security affair. It's been all made up. Every week, people are saying you're making him look like a fucking stupid cunt every day. I said, no, you're making sound like a stupid cunt every day. So I've got the letters upstairs. Then he said I was pretending I bought me back. So I've got the videos where I'm in hospital and Emma did a little video because I knew he started saying I was lying. And you can see me, I can't even fucking walk properly. You can see the scars on my back and everything. You've seen the state of me walking when I was on them bits of gravel. I could, you see, I was a mess, absolute mess. And my whole body had been fucking cut open all over. And I still come back. He was trying to bully me then when I was in a wheelchair, known for the fact I couldn't do nothing. Imagine that what man does that to any other person? You wouldn't do it, would you? Even if you hate someone in the world, you think fucking a poor cunt will stay at him. And what he was like, only only cowards do that. Yeah, Peter the Box, true, Brian. People seem like, yeah, it's true. If I can help you save money, if I can help you with anything, mental health, depression, win the lottery. I want half of that then. <laughs> I want half of them up in lottery though. <laughs> yeah. Have a million kids because you too poor. To afford a TV. Here's the box, true, Brian. Uh, stay, you all right, son? I haven't seen you for a while, well, stay. Nice lad, stay. I know he's we're all a family. I've known him since he was like, a fucking nice little kid like that. A little fucking snubbly nose little cunt where you were a little kid. <laughs> little, little kid like that, he was. He's like that little when he was a little kid. He was fucking tiny. But he's like, like that little skinny kid when he was a kid. We all are, and we used to look at that. Uh, but most kids do. I remember um, Mark Hartley's kid, like Liam, he's, he's fucking class, Liam. He's the real deal. Liam. Love him, he's a great man. He always calls me champ. So Liam stood there with me and Sean Day, and he's, I'm eating a lamb, he's eating an ice lolly, and on an ice cream. And he's looking at me anyway. And his dad went, Mark went, he's fascinated by the size of your brain. He's going like that, and he's fucking ice cream slid, slid, he's fucking ice cream slid off his corners. Because <laughs> it was red hot, we were talking about pigeons one day with, with him. All them top fighters who I know, like a Bram and all them. All of them are like, I looked after them when they were younger. They got in trouble and come to me. I tell them, don't do that, do this and do that and do that. So, so many people in this area going to jail, like teaching them, they're like Ryan, young Ryan, who you see on his documentary with me, saved him loads of jail over the years. Looked after him, he, he calls me dad still to this day. Looked after him for five years. Looked after loads, Chrissy, Chrissy, Chrissy used to come from town, used to come all the time stay. Looked after him. I looked after fucking uh, Mickey, Mickey Harrison's kids from the Grove Hill, little Mick, Mikey. He wouldn't go with only his nana and no one else. And I'd sit on the set there and he'd sit there every day. And I come real big, right? 
Oh, she'd come with my son. So I said, you just want to go out, right? The moment that was going out, so they had no babysit the kids, so I got them. So he said, he likes a, a shaky wakey, so it was milk, hot milk, like warm milk and sugar. Anyway, of course, I took him to the uh, where the airport is to see the aeroplanes and that. He absolutely loved it. Come back. She said, where is he? I said, he was sleeping on me, then. She went, you're joking. And uh, anyway, I got the phone, showed him, I said, I can't believe, man, come and have a look at this. They were, they were going outside. He's only asleep on Brian's knee. Can't believe it. Eddie on there, he screams the house down after about an hour to come home. And then when I was taking him home, going, do I have to go home? Do I have to go? Can I just stay? I tell you, those little daughter, Ruby, bless her. Love you, kid. Of course you can stay, because I went down and seen him and Leslie, the, 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 the was struggling, the right. Well, the heads were a bit battered over this, that, and the other. I went, yeah, there. I think I give 90 quid. I tell you, you take yourself out for the night. And I'll look after the kid for you. We've got Ruby here. And Ruby was playing with the dogs, Charlie and uh, Scrappy. She sat on the bed and she was watching the telly with the dogs at the bottom of the bed. Lovely kid. I carried her into the next bedroom, put her in the bunk bed so I could see. So I woke up there and I could hear talking. I've actually gone downstairs, made, made, made some butter and bread for the dogs. She was having a picnic on the top of the stairs about six o'clock in the morning with the dogs. <laughs> Fucking laughing me as I was. And Charlie went, oof, because she, she, she gave him the bread and he tried to bite her hand, not bite it to get off her. She started crying, she running, grabbed all of me. And anyway, I had a three days there, I thought, Bobby, Bobby had a four, three, four days. So I'm taking her up, she went, no, she used to call me Brian Cockles. She said, Brian Cockles, Brian Cockles were muscles. Brian Cockles were muckles. She used to say she couldn't, she was only a baby, about three or four. And Terry said, oh, she fucking loves She's never, and Leslie said, she's never stopped talking about you since she come back. I love my Uncle Brian. I love my Uncle Brian. All, all day long, so she goes on about. So I had to take her home, then she was fucking screaming in the house bound to stay. I'll get you next week, I promise you. Find somewhere of yours. Yeah, you probably will. You probably will stay the fucking everywhere. I had them all over, didn't I? I stay, that idiot was going, I was making I was making it up that I had a security firm. I, I even done the Broadway, he was a kid, he used to come in. I had the fucking Broadway box off in there. I had all the fucking shops. I had Popsy's shop. I had the fish and chip shop. I had the Palladium. I had the fucking, in the Palladium, I had uh, the Chinese, I think it was the Chinese and Indian and the Pakistanis. Like, there was three different takeaways. I had all the box off. I used to go in, I used to get 50 quid a shop and whatever I want to eat. That was a big mistake. Give me what I wanted to eat. <laughs> fucking, I've never out of there. Chicken tikka, fucking tons of it. I had all Durham Road box off. It was like, to me, it was like playing Monopoly. I've got that one. I've got the paper shop. I've got the uh, four o'clock shop. I've got the newspaper shop. I've got the post office. I've got the, it was like a sunbed place where you get massages and stuff. Or for, like, for, like physio. And then he even had the fucking gold shop. John Ramson had that. I'm the only person ever to get it because they kept going and robbing them. So I put the poster through the window, charging 50 quid a month for over the month. Yeah, John Ramson, they called him Chris, the lad who was the manager, and the young lasses from my art depot. Yeah, we haven't had one single bit of cheek or anything since we put that poster up. And he said, I'm making it up. He's fucking deluded. He, the thing was, Rob, when we did the book, he knows all the truth. He just loves to make lies up about me. And I, I can't understand what he's fucking doing it for. Jimmy Ray, what's Brian's favourite Elvis present song? Uh, I like Caught in a Trap. I like it. I like the one with them. Um, Once in the ghetto, and his mother cries. And that's a good one. And I like, I'm just a hunk of hunk of burning love. I'm just a hunk of hunk of burning love. Burning love. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Happy my temperature rising. Class them songs. You can't put them on because the fuckers, you get banned. You get fucking strikes off them. Just because I'm better than Elvis at singing them, few. <laughs> <laughs> I said, just because I'm better than Elvis, well, what's going on? I'm only joking there before he starts uh, saying he thinks he's better than Elvis now. He's fucking cocko, he is. <laughs> go, 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 go. I think he'd be pulling his hair. I said, he'd be pulling his hair out now. I said, you have not have less hair than fucking me <laughs> by the end of the year. I'm happy as fuck. Look at me, I'm buzzing like fuck. He was what? He's my pal, Mark. Mark's funny as fuck. So what is everyone really happy on here? We love it. It's a great channel to be on. I mean, I'm looking at the likes, did he? I've never had anyone had a thousand likes. It was just under a thousand likes a week, four weeks in a row. Nearly every week, it's a thousand fucking likes. Unbelievable. Don't forget to push the like buttons. Make me look a cunt. I want to murder you all. Oh, I'm going to get nicked now. 
then they're all putting steps tape it's against me. Rock help us. Rock. <laughs> I've just saved you money on your television license. The BBC will be after me next. They put the fucking hitman on one. Don't even tell me a hill. Not me, he'll take off next. No, you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. I mean, I think that's disgusting. It's all about you guys. A blind person gets fifty pounds knocked off the telly. That's fucking disgusting. I think it's absolutely vile. A blind person. Absolutely disgusting. I mean, it's bad enough for them being blind. But to take to make the fucking I can't watch the telly anyway. So imagine taking imagine only taking that much off, you think they say, Well, just give us fifty quid and you're not watching this. You're not getting the full ability. So why should you pay? Was it what was it again? Fifty pound a year? And you think they say, "Well, just give us twenty quid." Any normal, any decent human being would say, "Listen, people are blind. Tell us a free for you. You just have a decent heart, wouldn't you?" I think. What's it going to cost? They make the money they make. Just pure greed. I hate greedy bastards. John Usher, Johnny, I haven't seen you for a bit. Hope you're okay, John. Even by them in the chat. Thank you, John. John Rush is a good lad. Steve Shannon. Steve, I love Sid Steve. He's like, he's like a little son to me. He's yeah, fucking bigger than me now. He's grown bigger than fucking me. I still hope one of them signed somewhere. Useful. Yeah. I think there's quite a lot. There was a few like, when I was doing the, the, the club league, let a few up. I had them in Popsy shop as well. I had them in there. Uh, what's that? Not, not in the other side, but I was getting mixed up the other fucking side. This West Feeney got shot to death. That was all the shit people say. Oh, he got shot by this one, Keith McQueen. Yeah, I'm not a fucking shit. Keith McQueen was in jail doing a 12 year sentence. Sweeney got shot by a bowler, and um, I think it was, was it was a Bam Bam, I think. Or was it, was, what was he called that lad from? I'm sure he was called Bam Bam, I think, you know. Not Bam Bam from Groveville. Oh, he's fucking Kappa. That was a Kappa. Kappa shot in the experience. It was. Uh, Bowler, Bowler was a Somalian, like that seven stone ring. I couldn't fight to save his life. He was the most women speedy, and there's a couple of others from Middlesbrough, were the most dangerous people in Teesside. Even now, I wouldn't leave a glove against them. Speedy was one of them people you'd see. I remember him sitting in a wheelie bin waiting for something for about four hours, got out and chopped the fuck over. Really dangerous fucking lad, really dangerous. He was my like, second in command, and it was Bam Bam. And it was fucking, they're, all, they're all nutters. I had a I had all the lunatics, but none of them were cheeky to me, none of them were disrespectful. And I was told them to do something, they would do it. So you do it like this and do that and change that tire and put this on and do that and they'd do it. We never got caught. We never ever got caught for fuck all because I always thought, what would I do if I was a policeman to catch Brian Cockrell? So I'd look, think of every single permutation, go through it and through it and through it and through it. I mean, I remember once I made clear drive the car and took here cork, I think it was. I think it was a Kia, Kia Quarter, Kia, Kia Speed, I think, as well. I mean, so I think it was £5,000 in the car, I think it was. It was a 50 grand, it might have been 50 grand. And we, only, we were driving down the road, and then you do everything you can to never get caught. So we come to the fucking crossing near fucking Middlesbrough, you can go that way, they go a park end way. Fucking light stopped, we had a break, we broke you, we flooded the car. Next minute, do, 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 be oh, fuck, just keep calm, keep calm. I said, he's going to I said, don't do it, run. It's just, you're not going to get away in this. It was a, it was a fucking shed. It was a car you did. They'll never, never pull this. We had all the gear in the car, fucking thousands of pounds and all that. The next minute, I took it I said, sorry, officer, the car's flooded. It broke down. Just get, get, you'll get that tire, Brian. Get your mate to push it. We'll give you the push. There was only one cop on his own. It was just a little thing. Then the panda car called we go push it second game. Boom, 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 boom. I said, oh, cheers, mate. I've done that. You should have shook me hand like that. Went, Thanks very much. If you looked in the car, we'd have got, there was enough. We'd have just knocked him out. I sparked him unconscious. I'd rather have done knocked out. I'd rather got, I'd rather just threw him on the floor and got charged for an assault. But we got less jail than fucking what we had. And then I remember another time I was going over that. We pulled in about 50k, maybe 30, 30 or 50k of, of child, what I, cannabis. And uh, we used to get like so much. We used to get it from London, but we used to get ours first before any fucking else. So the more they really come to the top, give it to us, and go back down, give it to them. Because they used to give it to the bottom. By the time we got it, no one wanted it over there because we already bought it. So we had been up the lines of them. We were in the biggest gangs down there, like, like Sunny Keys and that. So they used to give it to me first. They came up to see me. They seen how, how power I had in the northeast. They went, right, I'll have him working there. They were really good lads. 
anyway we fucking uh we used to do all the gear that's my story yeah Okay. Yeah, so I'm going on the boat. I'm going this back road. My mum taught me it. God bless him. It was like through Rosworth. You go through Rosworth and you come to a train. There's a train crossing, but you can't even hardly see it. So you go across there, and then the other side, you come out, and it's the country road. So you come all the way down, you come out at Hardwick Hall. Turn right at Hardwick Hall. There's no cop cars, it's all good. So you come out in Wolverston Village, you turn left, go up to the bottom, and you can go straight up to Billingham. Or you can go left into Harrypool, hell, what a fucking road. Then he found the other one where you come up to a farmer's field over the fence. Shut the fence, drive down the field, right the way through, you came up the back end, back end where we mates used to live at the top end of the uh, Alton Manor. No cops or nothing with this fucking night. I believe I'll do this about seven o'clock. Only two fucking jam sandwiches sat there. Three litre senators, and oh, fucking hell. I'm coming down there, I thought, do what I'm not fucking, you've got all the gear about. Even if you get chased, it might be. Bash the fucking bit, so fuck it. I said, anyway, so I thought, what do you do? I think I will pull him, pull him, pull him, and ask him something. And he's I'm going to pull you out. So I pulled behind us, pulled on the, on the back of him, come on the side of it, got out, shut the door, and left the door open so we could see right through. There was no in it. And I just get this out of the back, I just got my jacket on so we could see there was no in the fucking car. So in the audit officers, I said, You don't know where the town hall is. Um, Hartley pull, I've got to meet my dad there. He's, um, he's in a pub down there that way. Oh, what you do, man, if you go straight down here, go out the way along, come to Brenda Road, turn right, go down the bottom, and you're exactly where. Right, Brenda Road, yeah, that's where my mum would see the there. You should go that way, turn right, turn left, and go all the way down, and you'll come to the town hall, and you'll see you go past Cameron's Brewery. All that went, oh, thanks, officers. Thanks very much. You've saved me, um, saved me, saved me time there doing that. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thanks for your, thanks for your time. I drove off, looked in my mirror, and oh, fucking blimps. Well, why would you pull someone who's just pulled you? It's for directions. Only use upstairs to drink, then downstairs for dancing. I can dance. <laughs> like my granddaughter, like I said, she's a knockout. Funny as the yeah, kids are funny. Eli's fucking hilarious. I swear to God, he's so funny that dog. He's the funniest fucking dog on the planet. So he said, "Yeah, you were only a little tiny kid, when you should be that little kid like that. Fucking tiny he was." Fucking massive now. Still not big enough to get your ass smacked on me. <laughs> He's another one. So if I said to him, do this, do that, he knows he'd listen to me. I know you would because he knows I know the scores. If I say, keep away from him. If I tell someone to keep away from a certain person, there's a reason why I do it because I fucking know what the person like. I did with Speedy. I said, keep away from him. He's wrong in him, you know. But no, no. I said, Speedy's wrong. Next minute, Speedy went to jail. He went, what the fuck was I doing? I did it with him. You remember the. Um, it's the um, who lived in Winnie Banks. Winnie Banks, what was he called? Steve Lovey, like bodybuilder. He was doing the crack. So I went to his door and I said, Steve, there's too many people. He said, I said, how many people come here? He said, well, that's just plugs it. He said, no, nah. I said, I said, yeah, there's too many people coming to your door. He said, too many people, what they'll do, they'll put a camera up across the wall of the garage where Bam Bam was with me. Well, he said, Brian's right, you know, they'll put a camera up and they'll get you by fucking guilt by fucking all the people coming. I said, get some half cheap t shirts of, of Tom who sells them over the over the border. You only pay 25 pence each for them. And when they come and give them the t shirt when they go, and you've got 20 quid, it's cost you 25 pence. So you're still getting the 25 pence, 25 pence down, but you're going to get off. So when they say, oh, well, you can see I'm giving t shirts, we know so much fuck about it. Right? You're going to get a massive jail stay. But no, I won't get caught. Oh, I said, you listen to me. Two weeks later, he's out the front. Yeah, I say, yeah, all right. They went, we're just um, fixing the light in the street. It's broke. We um, went to the council. All the badges showed them the council badge and all that shit. Goes up the thing. She says, you want a cup of tea, lads? She's making a cup of tea over the road. They've got a garage. You can see right across from over the road, Winnie Banks, right across the garage. You can zoom right in. The cameras are fucking unbelievable. That was even then they could see. What they were doing, what they were, them two people who come and the one in the, in the lorry who drove it, they know that he goes up near the other thing. He goes up near like a conveyor, I don't know what's fucking called, I can't even call him, go down. And he's at the top, the ca- he's only up there. So he's, they've got in the house with them people and a cup of tea in the house. While they're in the house, he's outside putting the camera in the fucking light. So you like, think about it, electricity's on all the time, isn't it? So the, the only cost my mate, my mate's, um, Son, Joe Bass, young Joe Bass, 
he worked for the that's what I found out. He worked for the council putting cameras up. So it was a car parked up the road for me, and I was suspicious. And I had a little bench, the only one with the bench in like a Cosworth. Anyway, it was broken like that, and he went. So he phoned me, he said, Brian, he said, I've just been to yours today. If you have a look with you, I said, the car up the road. In the vent, I've just put a camera in there, they're watching you. So I left it. He said, Don't let them know that there's a camera in there, they put it in. He said, I said, How much would that cost? And he went, Oh, tenner. Fucking tenner to put a camera in, and they run it off the battery from the battery in the car. Sneaky bastards, just for seeing how they can get people to pull up registrations. So they were doing it with Steve. What the fuck did they call him? He got 16, yeah, the poor cunt. And he was fucking, he, was, he, died, he died in jail. Um, Steve, what the fuck did they call him? Could have a fight as well. Nice, nice lad. But I, I said, Steve, listen to me, listen good. You go into the betting office, you phone up and putting 10 grand on a horse. That's registered in the plea, that's registered in the betting office. You're giving it on your fucking card, the time of the day, and everything. If you're going to do that, go behind the back and give him his hand. Have the bet with the betting office, man. Don't fucking do it on your card because you can't. Anyway, you wouldn't listen. And you bought 100 grand fucking there. Uh, I think you paid 100 grand for the caravan in the car. So it's all, all in it's spent from like 160 grand in six months. He was on the door. I said, do you want to get caught? But he really got caught. He got 16, yeah. His daughter got him, I think, four, yeah. Steve Ward, that was it. said, Dave, well, well done. Love the lad, one he? I love Steve, he's a great lad. And uh, he went to, I went to jail. So when he went to jail, he said, I don't want to see anyone apart from Brian Cockle. He told Brian to come up. I need to know what to do. So I said, listen, what you need to say is, I'd be having my mouth because you can read me in them jails. I said, tell them that, yeah. Got, got on the drugs really bad. You got a load. You, your son pinched them and done a run with the gear. So I had to sell to pay the people back. And my son stole them and ran off. He said, that, that sounds good. That. I said, yeah, just say you were selling it to pay them off because my son stole it. It went and bought cars and all sorts and blew all the money. So I was responsible for the drugs because he was doing it. So I said, well, I'll pay them back. So he was having to sell them to pay them back. And he said, and they said, if I don't do it, they're going to pet up on my house and kill my son. So he said, well, give us the names. And I can't do that. I thought, well, I'll go to fucking jail. And all the kid, kids up. My son and my wife will get killed. These are dangerous people. So, yeah, he done that. But it didn't work. But I said, if you'd have been selling stuff, he said, you know what? You're right for sake of 25 fucking... I could have got the T-shirts for 25 quid. And I knew other people used to sell it. He used to say, look, go and buy, like, say, 200, 300, 400 T-shirts. 1,000 T-shirts, right? Might cost you a couple hundred quid. But you're giving them it and you're still making money off the rock it's costing you say eight quid the rock you're getting 20 pound back 20 pound back so it's costing 25 pence to be safe what you where's all the people come your house got to buy t-shirts then and you do that on the front no that won't fit you and you just pretend you give them something small like that and you do that on the front with them then you go back i'll get you bigger one two minutes i'll give you a lot of size uh, double xl come on so there's that one so there's that one all you have fit you in there yeah perfect all up two of them, so you, you're making a fuss, so it looks like you're selling the t-shirt, but they've only got the crack in the pocket, but in the mouth of the swallows, because it's plastic, it can get caught. You're all letting people come to your house, between 100 and 200 people a day, and that's what I got in jail, I said, well, how come the jury said, there's other 200 people sometimes going to the door, what, what are you doing with them? I said, even if you get some beer, cheap beer, let's give them a bottle of beer, anything, packets of, even if you got like empty packets of bags, you know, them empty boxes, got them off people, and went, Oh, there you are. I'm just selling, selling dodgy facts. That's what you could have done. So you get loads of dodgy, no people, loads of people smoking this there, get the packets off them, and give them a packet of facts. And then when they come back to get more gear, they give you the facts back. Then you give them back again on the front. So it just looks like, you know, it just looks like that. But he, he, he wouldn't listen to me, so he got 16. He died in jail of cancer, poor fucker. I don't know, lads. Yeah, he died no mouse, mate, didn't he? I tried to went to see him with no mouse. I was fucking crying on the visit. I said, for fuck's sake, I told you what we needed to know. And she said, I keep, I keep going. Brian Cockrell told me, he said, everyone in here, I've told him a thousand pounds. He said, everything Brian said, they put a camera up. They that dodgy fucking bogus fucking council workers or something. He said he was right about every single fucking thing. He knows he's suffering. I wish I'd fucking listened. Terrible. <coughs> I remember when he got married, I was having a deal on the night. Lovely man in there. What was it called? Cabbage Club. Nice lad, Steve. Gone now. Fucking well waste.
Oh, I'll tell you what. I've been alone tonight, one hour, 40 minutes. I'm doing better, aren't I? My beautiful friends. That's not me. Not me. I'm not friends. These are fucking family you're talking about. Right? Not friends. Timmy B. Fucking hell. Timmy B's in the house. Look, it is an honour to have him in. Steve, feel like. Sorry for you, bro. Yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah, he was a lucky lad, him. Lucky, lucky lad. One of them, if you can eat meat, but I've always been here. He used to work the doors and stuff. Really nice lad. He said, I know I can fight, Brian. I've got no fucking chance against you. I said, There's never going to be a fight between me and you, you fucking lunatic. I said, You're a fucking brother. You said, Was that? No need to talk like that. Stop talking daft. He went, You want I'm daft. I said, Yeah, you're fucking daft. <laughs> you want to drink? He was lovely. He was a lovely lad. Probably a good game as fuck he was. He was a nice kid. He was. That's what I'm saying. In life, you just don't know. The end. You get up one day, feel great, and you the next day, and you've got a fucking horrible disease. Like a state of mind, tax man. Who would have ever thought I'd be ended up like this? I'd been bullied off a simple little daft cunt. Well, not bullied. Just but bullied me, the silly cunt. Been fucking shot at, stabbed, picked with bars, picked shot with pellets, pellets off guns, fucking BB guns, fucking hammers. Baseball bats, fucking machetes, fucking ran over, petrol bombed a fucking lot, and I'm still standing. I'm still standing after all this time. You fucking take me down, I'm hard to kill. I am. I'll be back. I'm like fucking arrows, I just keep coming back. When they chop me the fucking their house and on the bank, they'll tell you how bad it was. He, he, he knows. Fucking stay, I was in. Still come back alive. Dun, 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 dun. Fucking. Come back out. I was in hospital for um, two weeks, I think, and then I got out. I went to the car. I've got the, the people who tried to kill me. I got them. Well, whether they tried to kill me or not, I still got them off. I never made a statement. But if somebody, let me tell you this, there's a difference now. Now, for instance, say you were out, your wife, for just a talk, say, there's someone to teach you something here. You're out, somebody starts throwing punches at you. You punch them back and you hit them with one punch. He's at you with four punches, you hit him with one. But what happens? You have to give a statement because he's grasped you up, so you can't grasp the grass. If you don't give your version of the fact what happened and you get witnesses to do that, you're all going to go to get five, five years before can ask because you broke his jaw. It's called uh, wounded with intent. GBH or wounded with intent. I will get wounded with intent, which is a bigger jail sentence. So if you don't do your statement and say, well, it was with Tommy Smith and Andy and it was a woman at the bar, of the manager, they go around and get all the evidence. That's what we do now, you see. And because we're doing that, now it's called us a grass. We're the idiot. We are grasses now. But what do you want me to do? Just say, admit to all the things I've never done and go to jail and get, let me let me get fucking two or three years in jail for something I haven't done. Of course, you have to make a fucking statement. So if you don't make a statement, the police can't do There's two sides. It's like Manchester United and Liverpool, right? And the manager, the footballer will be from, say, Hartlepool. So he's not in the middle, he's just uh, he's in the middle, sorry, because he's not biased in any way, shape, or form. So that's what you do. You have to don't start that shit. To, well, I'll be aggressive. No, you cannot. You need to leave off your top years ago. There's no such thing as grass in the grass. Think about it. If someone's prepared to put you away and make statements about you, you've got to make your statement back and say, Well, never happened like that, happened like this. If you don't do it, you're fucked. To me, that's the one door. It's 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 it's, it's, it's CCTV. It's different though. If you're in a pub, you, you, if you're in a pub and the people throw punches and you see, if you're still in a pub, right, and you don't know this, you don't know. If someone's coming towards you with, with men menacing violence in the face, and you can see they're going to throw a punch at you. You have a, you are allowed to throw the first punch. The, um, attack is the best form of defence. I know he was attacking me by the look on his eyes and the way he was coming. There was three of them coming. I think if I get hit there and I go down, they're going to kick me to death. I've got off loads of times with loads and loads. From the, I know they're quick to fight me. You can tell by the body language, by the way they're walking. You, you do that, they'll go like that. Like you need to give it away by the facial. So you just step back with more four punches and just hit them. 
or I'll go in that way. If I'm going in that way, and I'll start that way, I'm going to bang right on the counter punch him with the air. Because, yeah, you faint, you go like that, make a big windmill like that, and they'll go that way, and you go both right and the left, they'll catch you on the chin. Peter Land that clever unless they're boxed. But you can't, um, um, you can't, what do you call it, mate? You can't fucking just stand there. You can't not make a statement if someone's fucking throw a punch at you, punch you twice, bust your nose, bust your eye or something, then you break their job. Well, that's, well, that's not your fault. He, you've been assaulted, so you've had to assault back. It's called uh, protecting yourself. It's called um, defending yourself. So you defended yourself in the best way you could. I did it in a boxing stance. I didn't kick him on the floor. I didn't pull his hair. I didn't headbutt him. I didn't do whatever. They have to smash the lights. And, and when I was saying, so there's no such thing as grass in the grass. You have to make a statement to get yourself off and you're going to go to jail. Yeah. If you don't, you'll go to jail for fucking something you haven't done. And if the ones who, the ones who start the fights, they, they always make statements on you. They, they made cars and I, a kid. And yeah, pocket money out of my wages. Mark, wife. Well, the other from station, Mark, my wife, has me main cards. I'm like a kid, I get pocket money out of it, wages. I get fuck all. So what you're on about. <laughs> I'll get out. We might as well team, team up more both together, us three. We'll all get a house together, but we'll all go we'll to Max's. Yeah, we'll all stay at Max in the back of the lung. We's not coming home. We are not coming up. <laughs> husband's rights, husband's rights. <laughs> we'll just put, we'll go through Parliament with big fucking banners. Husband's rights. I don't get any pocket money at all. I get a big smile. How you doing? You all right, love? Yeah, are you? You all right? Yeah, all your fucking clothes and everything. Yeah. Oh, the fucking sneaky women, I tell you. You fuck, I tell you what. You think fucking... You think these bank managers, the women, bank managers, they should be because they're, they're fucking clever as really clever women, aren't they? Yeah, you know, they be fucking tricking the book, don't they? You know, you just pretend to be bad. You, you think you, you pretend to be asleep, so you don't have to do it. <laughs> I know you're awake, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I know every fucking thing. I can tell you're awake by your eyelash, <laughs> I can tell you're awake by your itch in your ear. I know every trick in the fucking book. You can't con them. Un Unconnable, yeah. Where do you think you're going tonight? Just don't think about that, are you? Are you? Well, you better think another thing. <laughs> you better think about it. Oh, it's fucking girl, they know every trick. Where you're going, no one's going to bash that daft gun before she went. I can tell by your eyes. You've gone fucking berserk and you were going to go and do something stupid. Oh, I haven't. I haven't. And I fucking grew ah, fucking like that, like a dog. <laughs> And she went, I know you, I've known you since I was fucking 30 odd years, I know exactly when I see that expression on your face and your eyes go black, I know you've lost the plot. What are you doing? What are you up to? Well, I'll come with you. She'll go sit in the car. Can't get her out. She's a cunt. I mean, don't be nasty about it. She's a cunt. She won't go. Get out now. When, when they were firebombing the house and she was on the front with me, I went, get in the fucking house now. Get in the house. Get your sister screaming at me. I'm scared. I'm trying to get her to go. She went, she fucked leave. She stood there with me. She wouldn't leave, so I'm not leaving you. I said, we're going to get fucking killed, you idiot. That brick could have killed you. She went, I'm not bothered as long as I'm with you. She won't leave. Bit of pocket money. I'm lucky. Oh, fucking hell, it's terrible. Going to have to take them out of the damn with the shows and everything. We'll all fuck off. We'll have a game. We'll have a day out. Like... Yeah, the wife's... The wife's and the boss was on the young with a chance of being you can't win. No matter what you fucking say, they have to twist at the opposite door and push yourself laughing. No matter what you do, you can't win. You might as well just fucking give up. Hit the like button, hit the like button, uh, show up support. Yes, thank you. Uh one with only one, two, three with a spanner. I'm happy with a stick of rock. Happy with a stick. I'm happy with a stick of rock. We had to wait somebody over the fucking head with it. Not your wife, though. <laughs> I, I, I used to love rock when I was a kid. Fucking don't like it. And have you changed like me? I don't know about you guys. Any use on here? Since you had the COVID, taste buds completely gone. I'm eating food. My mouth's bad. I can't even taste it. 
I meat like I had ice cream last night. I used to love ice cream. Every now and then I'll have like a half a tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I love the chocolate and cookies or something like that, cookie and cream and a meat, and then go, can't taste for all. So this morning I got up and I thought I'm gonna have a coffee. I've got to put the milk in the fridge. So I'm like, ah, I'll have a way fucking stumble and now bless us. You still be a tour in the bed. I went, fucking I did it once, right? All my cat 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 carpets were up. I'd be on the game up my line, I'd be on the crack. And it was I was on them fucking dazzy, not them dazzies, them fucking wobbly eggs. I'm stumbling about it, and I, I went whack, hit the, the other bit with a little little bits of bits stick out the gripper where you put your carpet on. That was stuck up. I took me full toenail off. Went off oh, I thought, oh toe. Couldn't feel it, it was full of crack. The next day I got up, it was like boom. Boom, boom, I was fucking all the tears were in my eyes were pouring. Couldn't stop the pain. It was just fucking bleeding and a big bandage on it. I was putting in warm water. I mean, the bucket was full of water. I was just pissing the blood on, on crack and on steroids at the same time. Your blood like, congeal, doesn't congeal. I was fucking, I couldn't walk for about two weeks. Absolute agony, take the toenail off. But I never felt a thing on the night. Got up next day, the crack had gone off my system. It was fucking killing me. Chelsea, Mrs. is the same, looks after everyone. Mine's the same, mate. My wife's the same. Every fucking day comes on the phone, she helps them. No, that helps everyone. She does. She makes dinner. She come my house, everyone gets made dinners and fucking food. If they don't have it, she goes mental. Got a nice black and Nike. No knock to to go with energy blue. I haven't got a fucking clue what you're on about. <laughs> got a nice black knock, Nick. Nike. Not, uh, I haven't got a clue what the fuck that means, Peter the Vox. Got with energy blue. I'm lost, Peter. Fucking Peter. I think you need to give me some tablets. <laughs> I think if we all, no, we should all do one night. We should all take a load of tablets. I should be saying, I should have. We should all take the same tablet. <laughs> <laughs> All of our legs on the same page. We've been on here for about two weeks talking shit. When you do things when you're off your head, you're on stuff and you like say tablets and make your cabbage. And you like do something, you do it seven times in a row. It's still not right. You keep doing something. Like, what the fuck you do the next day? You get up and you just do it two seconds. Or you'll put something somewhere, you'll put something down like that. Well, that's that thing. You're looking all over the right fucking front of you, right there. Right, you just put that thing. Looking all over the table, walk over there, you walk over there, go over there, you look under the table. Why did I put that? The next bit's right next to you. And then I get up the next day and you walk over to it, turn there thinking, that wasn't there last night. It fucking was. Fucking drugs make you crackers. They do they make you crackers. If that's the worst thing you go, where's my keys? I put the keys the same. I put them in the corpse there so the dogs can't get them and stuff. And I put them on the very top of something. Very top because I got the Cosworth pinch once. Couldn't have broken my house pinch the Cosworth. Anyway, put the keys in the same place. So I've got it the same place about 40 times. Anyway, I think Steve Steve's here. I need to get a new fucking 400 pounds for a new key for 400 pounds of joking. It's, it's a 2.2 Vectra uh, convertible. I know it cost me 300 odd pounds and 50 pounds for the book. Come on, I couldn't believe it. I said, well, can't put with that. Fucking gutted. The only found I could the other day. Fucking devastated. It was in the kitchen on the top. £400 of a fucking fob and I found it, found it on the fucking kitchen top. Couldn't believe it. I think how Bobby did it, you know. There's no way it was in there. I think he I think he's had his pocket or something realised and then put it put it back in. I went in the black jar about six times, it wasn't there. Well fucking three months later I went in the black jar to get a scroll there for a door handle. And the and the fucking fob was in there. I thought you've had this you. He took his clothes off, gave it to Emma, Emma to wash, and realised it was in his pocket. That's what I think. I never said no to it, but I just knew. 400 fucking 50, 400 pounds or 450 pounds for a fucking stupid key. Fob. So the way my missus spends the bank, bust in an hour. Yeah, the fucking Baron's bank. I think it was zero bust. That one was at stake. <laughs> Woman goes around breaking the banks all over tea, all over tea side. Oh yeah, you buy them, don't you? Like, oh, she went, can I have some chip, can I have a pair of chip boots? Oh, 50 quid, something like that. 
£314, £350 per about. Pair of boats, you show you have more fucking for the many gold and the fucking diamonds in them. Oh no, that's what they are, these special boats. Special boats, they're about that. She's about that much taller. She's fucking taller than me with them on. They're that big. They're big black fucking them ones with the goths wear. She's got it up with Whitby, fucking with the goths. And she can have another pair of them. These were Dr. Martin's, these were 280 quid. I went, for fuck's sake. And then 280 quid and 18 pounds for the laces. You get about six laces, different types. Whatever the lace you wear, like there's all the there's rainbow with laces and all that fucking shine and black ones and white ones. So she's got that, yeah, £650 in twine. So they nearly just took £670, I think it was. By the time I took for a lift, it was nearly, nearly £800 fucking pound for the fucking uh, two pair of boots. Fucking hell. Ask again, they'll boot you out. <laughs> oh, they're not bothered. I don't stay. They'll get it. They'll spend £1,000 on them the next day. They'll go, do we get this done? You could get me that. Could do we get my hair done? Or could do we get this done? My face. Or could do we get that done? Could do we get this done? If you'll get that done for them, then they want two days later. But I'm sitting there getting there, uh, such and such. I'm sitting there getting for fuck's sake. Do you ever stop? Yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been, in the, I've been in the street had a fight with seven, eight people. I've knocked five of them out and booted this fuck up the other two and dragged them down by the end and booted them all over. And I've got Nick for that. The seven attacked me, two of them had knives. And I got Nick, I got off it when I went to court, went to court, went to court. Yeah, they had knives. I've got Nick for another one where I jumped up and knocked his lad out. He dropped the knife on the door. So all the people at the door where it was like, used to have these chains, used to they get rope, sorry, when you up open it for the people in. I went to come, I said, you can't come in there with shoes on me. I said, you're not allowed anyway. He said, what are you going to do? He put the knife on me. But it was a wrecking crew. I'd only been in the town about two weeks. So I was on the step, two steps up, and I jumped out with that, with that fucking, um, who used to throw the punch? Uh, Fraser. Fraser used to throw the punch, but he jumps off his feet. So I jumped and caught him right in the fucking chin, knocked him back up. And he was a cop one coming with another boy. I want him arrested. I want him because there were two coppers, cop cars there. It was on the high street in Stockton. The place was called Downtown. It, was, it used to be that he, um, a bar downstairs with a DJ, one in the middle and one at the top. But the record crew used to come in, go upstairs, start arguing with someone, and then they'd pinch the machine, the bag machine off the wall. Because he used to put like four quid or something for the bags in them machines years ago. And then they'd go start arguing with someone, pinch the beer. Go down the back stairs with three or four crates, and then also have a bowl cut, I think, to cut the one arm band, I think. I don't know they got into it, and then they'd push up certain thing where all the money would come out. So they'd have a guy going into it, like a paper bag, so you couldn't eat all the money, but you couldn't eat anyway because the rave music was that loud with the old rave. We used to pinch it like that. So anyway, I fucking got them anyway, fucking bashed them. And it, so she went down, I'm being arrested for assault and that lad for nothing. So Kenny Gregory was the manager. His missus just passed away, and lovely lady she was. Beautiful woman. And uh, she had two kids. Yeah, they were the same, the twins they were called. It was the, the two twins. And I had to go upstairs. I was the only one allowed to go up. They said, can we see Uncle Pride? I said, yeah, he's coming up to see you. So I had to put them in bed every night. So I used to go up and see read them a bit of a story, tell them a few daft stories, not, not serious ones, about training and stuff. I said, right. Come on, give me the cuddle then. See you, good night, good, good night. Promise me you'll go to sleep and all that, and I'll come see you tomorrow. And they look, they look forward to it every night. It's a good, it's a wet, they go about four or five times a week, six times a week there. And uh, so I've gone down, anyway, I've gone down, Kenny's, this is like, this is this time about the kids, I used to go upstairs. I was the only one allowed to go in, no one else. So anyway, she came up, she went, I'm arrested, so I'm stuck, there's two coppers each side of me. I said, he attacked me with a knife. She said, i never seen no knife. Anyway, the knife got dropped on the floor until he picked it up and ran off the fucker. And then I had the sparkle, his, his jaw was gone, everything was fucked, not clean out, all these people still drowning because we had to put them a chain thing like that back, like a, like a rope, and let, let the police over him. And keep hold of him there. I stood there anyway, I said, but anyway, so he took her upstairs to see the cameras. Goes upstairs, like the first floor, and then the second one, she's at the top, she goes in. She comes out, she I'm really, really apologise. I can't, can't say I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't see it. She says, because he says, watch this. Because he's already seen it, you see. 
slows it down. Then you see the knife like that, another shine of it going across me in my face. I jumped at him, but my back was against the door, so I couldn't really fell it back. So I, as he threw the knife, I come over the top of him and caught him and punched downwards, knocked him out. She went, I'm really, really sorry. I said, that was for them cameras. I was looking at four or five years jail there. Anyway, later on, about six weeks later, she was involved in an accident where she was driving 60, 70 mile an hour in a country village road, um, not an order thing it was. And she hit a bloke and, and he, he tumbles all over in the fucking air. She killed him outright. She never got done. She was she never had a, the blue light on enough and never had no siren. And it was only a village on a Sunday night. So we saw he, she, she got off of it. It's terrible what they got off us. She never had the siren on. If it's over 30 mile an hour on a road where, say, 40, 50 mile an hour, you've got to put the siren on. She never done that. She got off with it. And I go for a driving offence when I got chased by 17 armed response fucking coppers with fucking whatever the fucking guns they had in them days and got away, handed myself in, pleaded guilty, got remanded. I've never heard of anyone getting remanded for a driving offence. If I hit someone, I crashed the car, I smashed it into someone, I couldn't understand. I got remanded for three months in fucking no mouse and then I had a fight in no mouse and I got moved from there to fucking Durham. And when I was in Durham, the lad said, No, you've done your jail now, you've done your jail, it's over. Me and Monkey Lions were in there, he was good like Monkey Lions, fucking psychopath. Absolutely, got about 30 year recommendation. He's out now. He was in, he's a little loop the loop when I was in with. Great lad, my friend. He, we used to, we'd, run, we'd run the jail then. Really game as fuck. He was best best man for Paul Massey. He was in a gym, we were all training, and all these black lads come over, and Paul was on his own. And Paul, Paul um, Lions jumped in. I like fuck with them, drop three or four of them. You know, the white lads come over and say, Paul. Oh. And he said, From now on, we're brothers. And we became best of friends. Kev Kelly went to the funeral. He said, It was fucking horses and cars and fucking loads of cars. And he's like, But like you, Brian, you guy, it was just chock of people. Respect, you know, people going and kissing his coffin and everything. Yeah, he run, he run, he run, he run, he run, he run, he the bit where they've got all the cars when Ben Dobone did the documentary. There's about seven seven um, BMWs all sat in the front. One of them's the other mate, Aaron. He's a great lad from Stockport. Lovely lad. Very good friend of mine. And all the top gangsters from all over the country. They all like me because I've never been a fucking snitch. I've never been known as a wrongman. And I've never been, I've never ripped anyone off apart from drug dealers. And if I have ripped someone off, if, if I've been wrong, I've gone back and given them a stuff back. in Jerry's yeah. I like I like and them the Tesco's are just as good, you know. Tesco's own ice creams are just as good. The uh, and uh, what they're they called? Cookie dough's good. They're nice. Take it from the neck. Oh I could. Need a fucking bank loan. I need a fucking bank. Fucking no last. I might as well wear one of the fucking hats and the roll up things on there. How can I help you? Ching, 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 At least we know what you meant. Meant tracks. Oh, tracks. I don't know what tracks are now. Fucking hell. Chucky's got a fucking parker. That's it. Fucking parker. Had that parker for about fifteen years. Yeah? Train spotting parker. There's the one two five from Middlesbrough to the one two five to Newcastle. I can't understand that how people spot. Well, there's the registration. B five three seven five seven. What the fuck's all that about? I can understand the beds because beds are nice, but I can't understand this looking at trains. Oh, I've just seen the steam train from Middlesbrough to Newcastle. What the fuck do you get out of that? Or look at airplanes. Take the registration of airplanes down. I don't have one clue. Got a monocle, yes. I'm going to then. 69 on, guys. Don't forget to push the like buttons.
looking well tonight. And that's another thing we've got in our notes. We're getting 1,500 people a day, 1,700 people a day watching that. Because the thing is, there's quite a few, I can't say the names, that come on today and said, look, we apologise, Ella. We apologise, Brian. We didn't know this said person has been brainwashing us for the last two and a half years. I seen a video of him last night and thought, what a lying bastard you are. So all these people are starting to fall away with him, all fucking him off. They're starting to realise it's the truth. So he said, I, he said, I thought, he said, oh, i never done it, he's lying, he's making it. I never did a video, I said, I'm a crack of weed. I never threatened a man in the wheelchair, he's telling them to tell lies. So the lad said, I seen it last night, remember? He said, I can't believe how bad it is. She said, that's nothing compared to what we've got. So I believe he's now, I really believe he said, I won't be fucking working, I won't be doing that with him no more. And this is one of his main people. I'm not going to mention his name, but he was really, he said, we've all been brainwashed for the last three years. Completely brainwashed. Well, that's what he does. Lies and lies and lies and makes you believe him. No one wants to know him. Not a soul. The truth, my memo says the truth always comes out. It always comes with thank you favour saying it always comes out of the wash, son. So when you put stuff in a washer, where the fuck's the red sock? And where's the green blue sock? And in the end, it's stuck somewhere in your pan. It always comes out of the wash, and that's what's come out now. It's come out of the wash with him now. No one has no one believes a word he says now, which is great for us. But if you don't believe, how is Judy going to believe? Because all they got is evidence, and the evidence we've got is fucking compelling. Because when we spoke to the, the officer, he said, If you've got what you've said, I don't think really if you've got exactly what you've just told me you've got what you've said, there won't be a court case. Which is brilliant. And like I say, I, I did. I, I apologise to the man. He's doing his job. I'm going on old school coppers. Lost my temper last night a little bit, and I fucking. She was crying and that the other day about it, and that's so upset. And I realised when she, he wasn't being horrible about getting her coming back for. He's in a big, might be a murder. I think he's under or something. There's been lots of trouble in, the, in this area. There's been a few people killed, a few people shot, shot and stabbed. There's been some horrific. Uh, things happening in Eston as well, so loads of stuff's been happening all over Teesside. So obviously got that it was precedent and comes fast. Obviously that was just that's been a miscommunication. I mean that idiot got it's gonna get twenty yeah. I mean if you're pleading guilty, I've been looking at the guidelines, the maximum you get for really bad malicious community, which is mine's not really bad, is two full year. In that two year, what they usually do they'll give you a two year suspended sentence or they'll give you like a, a fine. And a caution. You get my mate said he got up and he said mine was real, I was really threatening him and everything. So I smashed his face and no answer for him. said, None of that, nothing. I haven't threatened him or anyone, there's no violence or anything. The cops said, Yeah, no, that there's no violence on there, there's no threats to child or anything. So he said he's just making that up. So there's nothing there. So the most you could get is probably a caution. I was talking to someone the other day who knows a lot about it, said probably a caution and a uh, and a fine or something, maybe like a fifty pound, hundred pound fine or something, you won't get anything bad. And there's no way they're gonna put you in jail when you're in the injuries you've got. So that'll win the case at all, but I'll definitely win it because the stuff we've got, it's not just saying this and saying that. It's to threatening to burn houses now, threatening to kill people, threaten to murder people, like rape people, all that stuff's in it. I'm not saying all people have been saying it, but that's what's in ours. So ours is totally different from what he's saying. He's got an us it's just like playground stuff. 40 years pro, walked past last week. What's my nose? I had cheeks up. Just do you know. Well, I hope you're okay, Rock. Make sure you get it right because sometimes you can, uh, your nose can be broken, you don't know, so you got to get it checked. Yeah, just, just uh, rest, don't stress yourself. Next to me, can hear the bones of my neck clack clicking like fuck. Sounds like a fucking uh, packet of crisps. 62 on 41 thumbs up. Now we guys, you can do better than that. We could get 60 up tonight. I think we could do 60. Look at the tax man still going. Come on, I think what it is, what's happening now? You know, it's tonight. I'm not stiffing like I'm usually having my eyes on water. I've just realized tonight's the best night I've been on. But I stop water and get in there. Back on the lines again. When I 
he he comes, we can get our party all going. Yeah, that's what I'll have, Mark. That'd be a great idea, Mark. Terry's on about that. He said half of Middlesbrough's want to go to the fucking in the dock, and they'll all be cheering like fuck. He said, you know, we're gonna fill the docks. We're gonna fill the course that day. We're gonna chock a block the course. We're gonna get everyone we know to see this couldn't get any justice because we're gonna get not guilty. If we get the not guilty, then we're gonna go back with a camera charge of perjury, prevent the course of justice, calling me a nonsense and I'm a rapist and all this stuff and all that crap. All that's gonna be coming out, telling people lies about me. Um, sexually assaulted young kids and all sorts. I've got all the screenshots we've been talking about it. Serious deal, that. Serious fucking deal. But he can't take it. He can give it. He can't take it. And as soon as he starts taking he starts phoning more police. But he, he can't phone them no more. He, he, this now is, it's at the end of the year, at the end of your road now. And after this, I love no further action. I think the police will do for this and police time. I really do this time. I think they're fucking sick of him. I said to him the other month, what's going to happen? You know the place. They'll only took pickups. They'll only do so much. And then I think, wait a minute, we have wasted now. This is about the 20th person he said this about. They've got the records to look at. We haven't. They'll go and go, this is the 25th person. 25 times, 25 no further actions. There's something not right with him. And the telly said the day, what's going to happen? He said, he had a lad who was the same as him. I think the, 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 the family members got him nutted off and he never ever got out, never, he got nutted off. I don't know what place he got sectioned in the mental health act. He was a danger to the public and a danger to him and his family. So the section did for good. That's what he's going to get. He's going to get sectioned for life. Because fire and bomb, fire bomb people's houses, the so, so called things. If he's found for something like that, anyone's found for that, you're talking a fucking massive jail sentence. Bell Marsh, one slaughter. Somebody's just been on today and somebody was wanting some fucking scumbag trying to kill a woman with a knife. I think it was Birmingham. And she'd run away with a pram or something. I think she got stabbed. I don't know if he's killed her. But then I seen a man, it was a foreign name, was wanted for murder. So I wonder if it was him last night. Came on like a news. Canteen Freedom. Honestly, Peter, you go to the main page and I will say join. Peter, you all right? Peter, Peter. Days of Radio 94. Yeah, that was the rave scene. Big rave song day. I've got it every night, anyway. I've just laid in my bed, put put my shadow box in the car on the on the in the mirror. I did legs last night, I walk up a small foot can only walk. I did leg extensions. We what I do is instead of just going like that with them, what I do, I've invented these myself. You go on, you come up and go up one, two, three. Hold it down one, two, three, up one, two, three, back down one, two, three. Oh, I fucking killed you. Get like 20 reps, your legs are on fire, so you don't have to use loads of weight because you're burning like a foot by holding it. So you hold it like that one, one, two, three, back down one, two, three, back up one, two, three, like that. And I'm telling you. You get to about seven reps and you can feel the bends on me and then you do your leg biceps the same. Then go and do a bit of squatting afterwards. I just use a uh, body weight on the bed, squat on the bed, about 20 reps. Then have a minute rest and then go back to another 20 reps. And then I just do 40, 50 reps. But I think the blood, I told you, if you don't get the blood in, the blood in your legs, it to help your legs uh, stronger. Yeah, it's definitely getting better, son. Definitely getting better. Take his head clean off with one shot. One shot, the pie would come off. We haven't got the bottle of me anyone. I imagine, imagine hiding in a different town in this area, running away from where all your friends are, and because you're too scared to face people. What a coward. What's happened to my house? I'm still here. He is a punch, mate. He 
can't do that. Suddenly you go to him, he phones the police, he's obsessed with the police. He, he, he's got a nine 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 speed dial on his phone and everything is fucking terrible. But everyone in Teesside can't stand him all over like Roeville, uh, Robinstown, Red Town, Eston, every fucking where, Salt Bend people, everywhere you go, I can't stand him. But I'm glad. Yeah, I thought was I thought it was Brad, was Bradford or Ben. I said Emma, so she died. Fucking terrible. Pushed a pram down the street, stabbed to death. That's fucking terrible. I think he was Asian. The lad was in it. I think like, like, like an Arab name or something. I'm sure it was an Arab name. Fucking terrible. No matter where he's from, isn't it? It's fucking disgusting. He should never get out. He'd be probably mentally ill. Another one. Unless it was his kid or something. One of them ones were fucking you know, radicals. Over them countries over there, like Greece and fucking Turkey and places like Afghanistan and Iraq, your wife's are like fucking the dogs get the chair better. You have to stand behind your husband walking down the street. You look at another man, they get a fucking bat, bat in the mouth. To steal the kid from here and take it back to Turkey, head to over there. Greece, Turkey, places like that. You can't get into expedition back, you can't get the kid back because he's the dad of the kid. Totally different over them countries. Go to Baghdad or something like that, you can't come back with the kid. You can't get the expedition to get your kid back. Keep the kid with their religion and stuff. And the kidnap them, take them away. So I was to pretend they're taken for holiday and never come back. Elmarsh, Belmarsh, you mean, yeah, Belmarsh. I don't got built to it. Was this person I went straight on last class Beirut? Yeah, Beirut. 71 still on, fucking hell. We well, don't get no one watching our channel. 71 people still on. Yeah, we just we, we just can't wait till it's just fucking end, end with this shite with him. He's fucking sick to death of the same crap every day. Five years, by the time this goes to court and it's done, it's five years of free torture we've had. Every fucking day. Today I've had about 40 daft comments. I'll say I had about 30. Emma, if you're going to watch this, stop looking at yourself in the camera. We have to look at the fucking camera, don't you, to, to look at the people and get the questions. Anything we do is on with a dish and a pathetic comment. You need to do this. Your hair's not right. Your hair looks like it doesn't mean. Your hair looks like you've been walked through a bush. Yes, I was just done yesterday by a fucking designer hairdresser, Kerry. Just smart with jealousy. Look at your fucking wife. Take a look at your fucking wife. You have to pay for it because you can't fucking get it. You have to go out and pay for it. Embarrassing. What are you going to do now when you can't get no fucking result? What are you going to do now when it's all found out? It's all lies. You would make for you would make to survive jail. You would last five minutes in the jail, you. You'd be like, you know the big fat, you know the fat one. Me, me. In the scream, in the Shawshank's Redemption. You'd be like that one. It would last two minutes. And it's fat ass by a mile. Remember the film? Social Redemption. The first one to cry. Even the first one to cry. You cry before you've got through the gates. I'm an author. I shouldn't be in here. Ooh, Peter the Box. I became a member. You hit the likes buttons. Yes, Peter the Box, you tell them. I've got some for fucking some weeks. I've been in the sun outside with my hands are white because I've had to sleep through the window like that because you can't stand with your fucking top off, you know, from the air at the window. So stand at, stand at the top with the window open so the sun can hit me or I'll sit on my bed so it comes through the window. So I've been getting tan. Yeah, I'm cold. I can feel I've still got the cold, but the eyes going so that the stuff which you got me, they said about, they said about five days, I think it's about six days I've used it. Yeah, we have a great time when he's not on the fucking thing. It's class, isn't it? Marvels, everyone's laughing and joking. Uh, when he goes to jail, I just can't fucking wait. I think we all should go outside home house with big banners, chucky dolls and everything. I, think, I really think it's going to be like that, you know, for him. I think yeah, fucking everyone hates him. Tell you something, he said, every single town we go, because he's made it, there's a businessman. He sells cars all over tea, all over the North England. Goes to London, everywhere. He said, everywhere we go, the first thing they say, 
he's a fucking asshole that author he's a fucking scumbag so he wouldn't dare say that Brian Cochran was fit and a coward though that the, the, the legend like Brian one lad said he said couldn't dare, wouldn't have dared say nothing like what a coward hiding behind the place I would be embarrassed mate I would be really embarrassed but he won't be because he's a sniffling snitch he calls everyone a grass I can't believe he calls everyone a grass it's the biggest place to follow the walker that's what they do don't they it's like um the people of Romans, like your Deckers and that, and your Paul Sykes, proper Romans, raping young kids and that. And, and, but it wasn't me, it was him. It was like they, they try to deflect it back on someone else. That's what they do. They the mirror image in it's called. So he likes the Decker Higgies, and he likes the fucking uh, Paul Sykes, and your people like that. They're all them type of people. Everyone knows what they are. That's why no one, no one liked them. That's why they had horrific deaths when they died. 43 for thumbs up, getting towards the 50. We need to keep getting the, the big numbers up on the, the thumbs up because it annoys people so much. Looking good, Brian, you getting better day by day. Yeah, I am, mate. I am, Peter. Last week I was down with that flu, really bad. You can tell, you can still hear it in me. I had it for about, I've had it for about five or six weeks, could not get rid of it. I've got these uh, amoxicillin tablets, I've been taking them, and it made me balk. I've been, I tell you the truth, guys. I mean, eating food, I can't taste the fucking thing. She so made me a lovely omelette this morning, over omelettes, with a bit of cheese on. I mean, they're like, I'm balking eating the omelette. What the fuck's wrong with me? Then, then I read up on them, moxel and make you feel really sick. They actually can give you a fucking thrush and they can give you the uh, yeast infections as well. They're known for it. They're known for it. But because of the like, the big, there's the yellow, red and yellow, I think they are. They're fucking huge, like horse tablets. Take like, like one of them and you fucking take like as big as nearly that. Take like putting the battery down your throat. <laughs> How am I supposed to swallow that? She went, easy. Fucking hell, I said. The taste of so one meal there, a bit of instead of in the taste. Oh, it was horrible. Disgusting. I've been on them about four days, five days. I've only been taking two a day. But I feel better. I feel better today, but I feel really, really warm. I think that's because I've been in the sun today. I was in there for about 20 minutes again. I'll go out 300 seconds and go and sit down. Wait for it to come back and go out. We'll go 300 seconds, leave it an hour or two. Go back up again, just builds it up. Because if you go up, like, I won't go 20 minutes, it's burn. I burn if I go too long. Yeah, we're going to have a big party. Then all the lads, you know, I'm out, so I'm giving another big fucking party, all right. It doesn't matter what Jaylee goes to, like, I don't give a fuck. No matter what Jaylee goes to, it's, uh, it's game over. People won't tolerate people like that in jail. You all know you're all rocking on. Whoever's been in jail, you all know. People won't tolerate scumbags like that. They never get away with it. It'll be on numbers then. But let's like say, I, I hope he gets sectioned in the Mental Health Act so he can get help. As a Christian, I hope he gets put in a, a, a unit where they can give him certain tablets instead of him taking that shit every day. And you'll see a different person when he gets all that stuff out of him. He'll come out and think, fuck it, I was a demon. I was fucking horrible what I was doing to people. And he might realise and come back and say, look, I'm sorry, and apologise to people. But he can't. When you've got a wife with you, let you take them things. And do them type of things. Well, yeah, she'll come in if I'm starting to mention someone and turns it off. I'll admit, I can tell when she's gone mad. That's why I've got up the last few times. So she, I know when she's gone mad. She said, I couldn't when she goes mad. You've got, you've got to get up and go. <laughs> you get in trouble off her. So she knows, she just, it's what it is, she just doesn't want me to get locked up. But I don't mention it, like I said. <laughs> uh, coming to Donny, I've been to Donny, Doncaster. I used to do the race course there. I went to have a fight there with a lot of years ago, about 20 ago. There must have been about three or four thousand travellers there. Never watched the fight, I went and got a debt. I had a £120,000 debt I got with me, me and old Jamie went there with a little car. And we went down a, a, a little car, we got there, and the travellers all come up and started jumping about. I said, don't start doing that shit in front of me. And I went, what's the matter with you? I said, because I don't like people throwing punches when I'm stood, I'm going to have a fight in a minute. And he went, the lad's door, he came out, he went, you're Brian Cochran. I went, yeah, he said, I can't fight you. I said, what well, is, brother? I don't have any trouble with you. I've got family, but if you want to straighten me, I've got an ear. If you win the fight, you keep the money. Well, right, I'll pay it, I'll give you my word. I said, okay, brother. I said, come on, shoot me, shoot me. He said, no, I'm all right, thanks. 
I said, no, I'm not, I'm not that type of person, I promise you. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'll definitely pay it. I paid the money, like, you all right? We went, we went back, fucking, the van went back when the, when the van was fucking stolen, van, the little cunt. When the travel, he said, oh, we'll have to go back in the van. So old Jamie went back in his car, we went back in the van. It was stolen, so he hid it in fucking yam. Little cunt. What we do, leave it here, went to that stolen. You've had me drive all the way from, from Doncaster, the stolen van, with fingerprints all over the cunt. Right, it's blown it all down. Phil Dinger loved listening to his all about Lee. But for a year, he was a good fight the other day. Oh, my neck. Definitely getting bigger now. Fucking hell, train like fuck. You know better than me. You can see, or the you can tell. If you go back to my video of the year ago, something you'll see the difference in my pattern in my face. It's got fatter. The muscle tissue in my neck, the traps are coming on. My fucking arms are getting bigger. My forearms are getting massive again. So, yeah, training good. I mean, really good stuff. I mean, I've got these new protein things as well. I'm having them a day. I'm having about 400 grams of protein a day. About 300 grams of uh, carbs, and then I've got the neat protein drinks on top and bananas and things. That's banana. Don't talk about yourself, children. He's lurking now. Who's lurking? I train when I have to come off here. When I come off here, I make it some side saw and all that. So I'll train and it takes the pain out. But in the morning, I get up and I go, oh, fuck, I'm like, oh, yo, oh, yo. Like the fucking wizard, the him off the wizard, the boss, fucking the tin man. Oh, yo, oh, yo, fucking can't move. I just did biceps. I won't be trying to because I did biceps before I come on. But I only did uh, two, two sets of 30 with about five key dumbbells, but I did them like when I come down. One, two, three, back up. One, two, three, back up, and I was just squeezing them like that all the time and in that position, and back down one. So if only had 10 key, 5 key in each hand, and uh, what I've done is instead of me gripping it, I put them between there with elastic, back, back like, a, like a band. But it's where you put, you can put your, you can put it through like that, and you can put a little weight on, so they had like 5 key. So I've got my fingers where they have to, it was like that. So then by some hand, I had to pull them back. So I did it that way, like that. So I lifted it up so I could stop my hands. When I do it like that with that hand, I grip, my hand seizes up next day. So I've stopped gripping as much. And what I'm doing, I'm tying my rip, I'm tying my, my hands onto the, the pull down machine on it. And I'm putting a rope around there and tying it on it and wrapping it around. So I'm pulling my wrists down and back, around the back. So I'm not using my hands because when I'm gripping with my hands, my hands the next day, I fucking. I go in like that, all, all angles up to everything. So now, my hands are like that. Now like, I can make a fist, but I can't do it when I, when I do back. Two days, my hands are bad. Fucking terrible being like this, isn't it? Fucking horrible. I'm saying that. I could have been in the wheelchair for the rest of my life. Or para, para, paraplegic in a fucking hospital bed. They said, your spinal cord's down to that much. He said, it's about 100%. Yours is down to about... 20%, he said that could just sever and you'll be paralyzed and let down, can't do nothing for you. Fucking hell, good serious then. I'll be able to get pipped then, water then. <laughs> she said, he's okay, I'll be able to get me pipped then, water. He fucking started laughing at the doctor. He was laughing, he said, yeah, he's funny, he's funny isn't he? The doctor, isn't he? Dr. Dr. Bart, yeah, Dr. Christian, mum's called Nigel, something. He said, get back quick, it's good serious. No, anyway, I left it all the week. He said, why didn't you come straight back? I said, I know you usually just drama queen. He said, drama queens, come in here. Come in here, young man. I was 75. I said, come here. There's the surgeon. When we looked at your back, when we put it on, we put the light on, all six of us, me, him, and him, chose the names. The three of us are the top surgeons in the North, in North East, in North East Hospital. He's like the fourth. And these other two are coming through, you know, top surgeons. We all went 
turn the light on to look at the the, the um, MRI and went, Jesus, all of them at once. I said, so it's serious. <laughs> serious, he said. I can't believe you're walking. I can't believe you're even talking to me and walking about. Your calcified bones going all the way around your spinal cord like that and smothered it in bone. So the bone now is getting more closer and closer. It's going to sever your, your spinal cord. So I don't know how you're not in pain. So if there's any pain, it's hard to answer now. Nothing. If I have a fight and I throw a punch and hit someone for breaking me, I know what feeling. I can't feel any pain. No pain at all. Red's hot the other way, I suppose. was kettle on myself. Like, not loads. Well, a cup full of red hot water. My leg went all bubbled. And I looked at him and went, Your leg's all bent. Look at your leg. And I went, I looked at him and went, and it was just a little bit sore. It was third degree bent. Couldn't feel fuck all. Nothing. So I'm not going to get beat in a fight. I'm not, I can't feel now. Can't feel fuck all. I was punching metal the other week on the, on the, when we were doing a pull down. In between the rest. I was punching. He said, What are you punching in there? So it's like a metal plate. Bang, 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 hitting it. You're not going to break your hands. Can't feel a thing. It's all me, all me, all me nerves now. There's no feeling. Like the like silver hero one of the sun. Send him till he can't feel now. He'll be able to get him out. Inspirational. And they said that I'd never walk. You'll never walk again. And uh, they didn't, they didn't jump start me with that fucking stuff. Oh, well, me eyes fucking running. Fucking jump leads on me. Give me a better life. I, left, I collapsed on the uh, table thing. To me, it's that cool. It's mental, isn't it, when you look at them play these things? So you go the opposite way, what you think, that's it. Yeah, the opposite way, I've got to put an arrow in my face. And uh, they brought me back to life on the, the, the jump leads. Fucking horrible. Chucky Doll and Ty wrap it on the grill of me. <laughs> Tie the wrap, yeah. I'm I can't say no, but can I? Because I get it's get me, it's get me done all the time. I'm phoning the police on you. You saying things about me? I promise the cop I wouldn't make any videos anymore. Which I'm not. It's detrimental to me, so I'm not going to give my word and fucking break it now. I know for a fact today when I could hear him talk and he was telling the truth. He said, So I'll come down never. The next, he said, It might be two or three days' time. And she said, It's no good, we keep sending you uh, uh, to, the, to the cops. She, she spoke his name. No, just be sending you. She said, Because I've got to be there to show you everything. It'll be a lot easier because it's going to be going back and forth for months and months. She said, If you can do it like this. So the amount of stuff I've got is, uh, you've only got about 10%. Not even that five percent, she said. She said, We've got here, and you've got to be joking. He said, No, she said, There's worse than this. There's, there's, that's nothing compared to what he's been doing, and that's nothing compared to what his wife's been doing, egging people on to do things to us in like different people's chats. What oh, oh, really bad, really, really bad. You know, not like, like, like another way, tamp them eyes into fucking burn people's houses down and uh, commit violence towards people, him and his wife. Terrible. She's got it all in her. I couldn't believe what she had. I mean, you can't believe you've got her on as well. She's got her on loads, loads and loads, golden people to do things. Well, that's really bad. Really bad charge. So if somebody gets burned the house down, somebody's telling you to do it. And they do it. They go to jail just as much. They get fucking hammered. I got fibromyalgia. You know what? I think I might have that. You know, I might have that. I better read it the other night. So I've got all the sad telltale signs for it. One day you're all right, the next day your fucking hands are fucking blown up like blue. And then another day you're great. And then two days you're fucking bad. And then another day you're crying with the pain. You, you don't feel it it's, in, in that way. It's it, what makes you. It, 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 tears come down your eyes. It's like the depression because you think. I can't even fucking train today and you start getting upset because you can't train. That's the, that's the thing. 
pain doesn't bother me. The pain is my hand's fucking killing me. It's on fire. It's like it's in a fire burning. But it doesn't hurt when I punch it. Say I punch right at the wall or on the table like that. Nothing doesn't hurt me. But it's like zoom, zoom, like electricity comes through your hands. It burns like fuck. I'm gonna get one. I think they get one of the tens. I I've got one. We have the lads coming one electrician, I think, to the other car. And he's gonna have a look at it. So you put it on the like you get that it's like a little round pads like that, you get about six or eight of them. You can put them on your chest and you, whatever. I just think they get them for put them on my back and my hips. Because I'll bring it back because it's stimulate stimulating the muscle. But it's shocking it, but it's making it come back the nerves. So he said, Yeah, get one of them the doctor sent me because they are good. There's tens of the call, but they're not as good because they're only tiny. So the size of me, I, I think you're better with the old type of skull ones that be round sucker things on you. But you don't have to you just tie them on with an elastic band. And you got like elastic bands in them. And the last time I used it, it worked. But the other night I tried to work, it worked, it wouldn't work. So I think this, I think it could be needed. Not a fuse, I think it could need a, a different help. The, the electric heads or something might not be working properly. Because it's coming on green and pulsing, and there's no electricity coming through the air. Uh, of the pads. Thank you very much for that. You be, I thought long seeing Chucky Chuck, Chuck Doll in the rear of the night. Fucking, you fucking, you, you fucking die, mate. You, you're gonna crash in the fucking car. Why did they fucking sign next to you? Why did they sit next to the cunt? Old pissy pants. I said, What's that fucking smell? I blame now, poor Bobby, you know, because he's he, he doesn't he doesn't have to get it back. That was Bobby, that smelly bastard. For the roof brick wall, yeah. Where we all do that, mate. We have days like last week, I felt fucking terrible two days ago. The pain was excruciating, throb, throbbing like fuck. It's like a pulse, boom, boom, boom. It just doesn't go away. Conspiracy to come at us, and well, yeah, we've got all that. We've, got, we've even got the kids now. We've got the name of the three perpetrators, we've got the addresses. We've got the phone numbers and we've got the screenshots, what we sent to them. We've got the lot now, the full fucking lot. All three. All three names, full names and addresses. Where they live, who they live with, the lot. Imagine you as a fucking 15, 17 year old kid. How fucking low could you get? I don't know Chucky, Chucky doll, I don't know who he is, I've never heard of him. <laughs> right guys, I'm going to show because I think we've been on these for two or two hours, so we're in class tonight, there's loads of people still on, but yeah, I'm going to show because um, I'm going to get done for that one, I'll just say shows. I'll get fucking ten yeah. So I'm back on the normal one, and that's good. Come on, Brian, you can do this. Okay, good night everyone. See you tomorrow at seven o'clock and look after each other. And remember I'm only a phone call away. Remember, think positive, you'll be positive. Have a great day tomorrow and uh, sleep well. Lovely people.